713 on August 22nd. And this is the Salim Wakil Show on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. You can also catch us streaming loud and clear by using iHeart apps on your smartphones or tablets, or phablets, as they say, or by directing your browser to WVON.com. If you hear my voice, you have arrived at the place where we peruse the news of the planet to find our place in the swirling mix. I know I'm talking to America's most astute radio audience, so I try to treat callers like the special guests they are, and I expect a return favor for that. So family, get ready to exercise your mind muscles, because if it's 7 on Saturday, it's time for the Salim Show, live from WVON's Xfinity Studios, right here in the heart of black Chicago. Well, um, the political story of the era continues to be uh, the political story of the campaign era. Let, let, me, let me be a little bit more specific about that. It continues to be the unlikely campaign of Donald Trump. Yesterday, he pulled the largest crowd yet. Well, there are some who dispute that, um, but it, it ostensibly, it, on, on, on its face, it seemed to have been the largest crowd yet of the 2016 campaign in Mobile, Alabama. He gave that crowd, that raucous crowd, what it wanted, um, boilerplate popularism, Vague and featureless. <laughs> it, 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 was, uh, it was showmanship by a man who has uh, proven to be a master of the craft. Um, but, but, but the performance was more about uh, showmanship than anything specific. Still, still. Uh, Trump's visit to, to Alabama was a, was a strategic move that, that um, had him touching right down in the heart of, of red America, southern uh, GOP territory, and in an increasingly important early battleground in the Republican, uh, in the Republican nominating uh, contest, you know, the primary scheme. Um, these southern states are uh, increasingly uh, important. You know, I, I saw in the crowd almost, almost an iconic uh, example of, of the kind of black person that would be supporting Trump. Trump was a sister with um, a, a flaming yellow wig on. Or I, I, it may not have been a wig. She may have dyed her hair that color. I'm not sure. Um, and, and straightened it, um, you know, dramatically. But uh, she was there, you know, almost an embodiment of, of her symbolic significance. Uh, dark skin sister with a flaming yellow wig on. Um, it was interesting to see that. Uh, but, but, you know, it, it was as I say, it was a strategic uh, political move by uh, by this cat, the, this brash Manhattan real estate developer is trying to de you know, he's trying to demonstrate that his, that his candidacy has has broad appeal across every region of the country, um, especially in the South, where where eight Southern states will vote on on March first, and, and you know, in in one swoop. And that, and that really increases their value in this whole Republican nominating process. Uh, Trump's appeal in those states has completely upset the political calculus of, uh, of, the, politi you know, of the experts, the pundits. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 th this came out of nowhere as far as they, they are concerned. It has dramatically rejiggered the plans of the other Republican candidates. Now, Trump is leading in Florida, you know, which is the home state of both Bush, Jeb Bush, and uh, Marco Rubio. And um, Trump was really <laughs> uh, relentless in digging in on Jeb Bush's uh, boring campaign. 
and the fact that he, you know, he's a low energy candidate, as, as, as Trump kept uh, noting. Uh, the, 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 mo the mobile crowd w was sprawling and it was boisterous. Um, although, as I said earlier, most estimates, uh, mo most estimates um, assess that it was, it was perhaps, it filled about a half of the 40,000 seat capacity stadium. So that would make it a 20,000, uh, uh, you know, an audience of 20,000, which was surpassed by uh, Bernie Sanders in L.A., 28,000. But um, the, the popular kind of uh, estimate that is, that is, that is uh, going around is that it was in the 30s, 33,000 or so. And um, so Trump is, you know, is, 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 ha has the record. And I guess that's an important um, metric for, for, tr for people who, who are trying to assess Trump's viability. You know, how many people does he pull? Um, and the people were very enthusiastic, you know, they were pumping their fists in the air as, uh, as the real estate man uh, turned politician offered a menu of personal reflections and, and boast, but, but few policy specifics. It was really, you know, it was really humorous to see when, when, he, when he denounced Obamacare. And, and, and you heard the crowd cheer and, and you reflect on the fact that Alabama has the least, uh, Alabama and Mississippi have the fewest um, insured residents of any state. Uh, and, and for the first time in history, uh, the rate of uninsured is, is below 10%. Medically uninsured is below 10%. Uh, that was um, you know, a, a milestone that was recently celebrated by many people who, who say that Obamacare has made a decided difference. But yet, and in Alabama, one of the states least where the, there are the, the least people insured, it, it's really incredible to see them clapping for their own lack of insurance. The fact that their own uh, legend, you know, their, their, their uh, um, state officials have uh, refused the, the largesse of the federal government to sign up additional people who are uninsured, to, to give them medical insurance. It's incredible to see that. Uh, but that's, that's what we're seeing these days. And uh, Trump uh, is making that graphic. Um, and, you know, he took one shot after another at, at, uh, at Jeb, Jeb Bush. And, and, you know, Hillary Clinton, he talked about her. Uh, his speech focused heavily on illegal immigration but nothing specific. We're going to build a wall, he said, he declared. And, and that alone was enough to, you know, to spark this booming applause. No specifics, no logistical, um, you know, outline on how that's going to be done, anything like that, but, but just his assertions. Um, he, you know, he, he took considerable, considerable uh, time to bask and his own, his own early successes, the early successes of his campaign, noting all of the states where he now leads in the polls, including, as I pointed out, Bush and Rubio's Florida. And that's, you know, that's um, an accomplishment. It's it nothing to be scoffed at. Uh, he, as I say, he has confounded the pundits. And even those who uh, were, were happy to see his entry like a lot of a lot of Democrats, a lot of progressives thought that Trump's um, uh, colorful antics would discredit the Republican brand so much that it would make them um, unelectable. But even, you know, but they, you know, they have to reassess their uh, um, evaluation of what Trump is up to, or what he represents, because it's you know it's clear that he has struck a chord. It's clear that he's not a summer fling, as many thought. He's not going away quickly. Quickly, um, People are attracted to, to his celebrity, but they're also attracted to his attitude, his, you know, his, his uh, anti-political correctness um, sensibility. A lot of people, you know, were, were, were just itching to say things, uh, you know, impolitic things or, you know, politically incorrect things. And... Um, and Trump is giving them the license to do that. So they feel a bit of relief that he's on the scene. You know, he's saying what many of them 
was was screaming at their television sets as as politicians talked and and equivocated and uh, and failed to get anything done. Uh, so, but Bush and his allies they tried to fire back at Trump. Um, his super PAC, Bush's super PAC, which is Right to Rise, uh, they they paid for this small plane <laughs> to fly above the stadium uh, uh, that Trump had his rally in, and, and uh, they they had this little um, banner that had Trump for higher taxes, Jeb for prez, and uh, when it flew over, you know, it it, it ignited a lot of booze from the, from the crowd. Um, and Bush's campaign also blasted an email to, to Alabama supporters that were, <clears throat> you know, that, that sought to focus on Trump's uh, liberal positions in the past. You know, Trump has, in the past, you know, um, uh, uh, been a supporter of things like single-payer medical care, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, safe and, 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 and uh, reliable abortions, that kind of thing. Um, but you know he's changed as, as, as political opportunities have have opened on the right. Um, but but uh, Bush is trying to hold him to account and 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 is blasting those former liberal positions. And, and and he said that they're deeply out of step with the Alabama way of life. You know, but um, Trump was welcomed by Alabama State uh, Jeff Ses Sessions. In fact. Uh, Trump reportedly chose Mobile because it's the home base of Sessions, who's an immigration hardliner, very hardline um, member of the uh, of the legislature of, of the Senate, and he's been counseling Trump uh, apparently, reportedly, and has helped him develop his immigration policy papers. Even um, Sessions, he praised Trump's effort uh, when he was called on the stage at the rally, but he stopped short of endorsing uh, Trump. So a lot of people were waiting to see if he would do that. If he did, that would give Trump an enormous amount of, uh, of um, credibility. But he didn't, he didn't quite do that. Meanwhile, Clinton is facing increasing Hillary Clinton, you know, that other candidate. She's faced the other uh, front runner in the Democratic Party. She's facing increasing pressure over her use of, of, of a private email setup while serving as Secretary of State. Um, something I, I still see is, is um, uh, you know, uh, amazing that, that she would consider doing something like that. But during um, a Freedom of Information Act hearing on Thursday, a federal judge said in reference to Clinton, Quote, we wouldn't be here today if this employee had followed government policy. Now, that was a very damning statement for a judge to make because it was a direct hit to Clinton's routine um, justification that she was following policy at all times. Um, it, clearly, according to this judge, she wasn't. And the Justice Department is currently investigating whether any classified email was handled improperly. And there's so much email that it is likely to be stretched out for quite a while. Um, you know, these, these questions about various emails, were they classified, were they not, what were, you know, what were her intentions. Um, she's also going to be called into this Benghazi hearing. And the emails pertaining to Benghazi will be, um, will be uh, you know, carefully scrutinized. And you can be sure that there will be a lot of uh, contentious questioning uh, of, of uh, Hillary. So her campaign is likely to be de at least derailed for a while. And so, you know, many, many people are, uh, are um, trying to urge Biden to get into this thing because he seems to be the only candidate that a lot of folks think has a chance of Hillary is is, is uh, delegitimized somehow, if, if these emails do the trick or something else, um, then Biden would be the most likely uh, candidate. Bernie Sanders, though, is still, you know, a very viable candidate, according to his supporters and according to him. And he makes a good point because he says that the only way that the Republicans be, can be defeated, as they were uh, in, in the election to the preceding presidential elections by President Obama, he had crafted this 
this new coalition of, of, of you know, various electorates. And that electorate has to be enthusiastic. It has to be motivated to vote or because in, in, in the midterm elections, it was not motivated to vote and, and the Republicans um, won handily. So uh, Bernie Sanders is saying that in order for a Democrat to win, that Democrat has to energize these varied constituencies to almost a movement fervor, as they were really for, for uh, Obama. It was a movement, essentially. Um, and, um, and, and Bernie is the only candidate who, who so far has um, ignited that kind of fervor, that kind of movement fervor in the electorate. Hillary certainly hasn't done it, and, uh, and so that's the case he's making. <clears throat> but um, others are saying that Biden... It's, it's probably a better, a better uh, choice. <clears throat> so we'll see. What do you? Uh, you know, we'll talk about it tonight. I'm sure. Um, well, 340 rabbis, Representative uh, Gerard uh, Nadler, who's a, a Jewish representative from New York, and Senator Al Franken, um, senator from Minnesota, Jewish, they've all signed on to the Iran nuclear deal which, you know, brightens prospects that the president may easily override an expected veto of the measure. Um, the Republicans are pushing hard. Israel is pushing very hard. IPAC and its, and its allied organizations has much money, millions of dollars, to fight this deal, and they're doing it. Uh, you can bet that they're, they're doing it. And, and you hear, for example, you heard Trump talk about, no, and, and it's really... It's really uh, revealing when you listen to these folks who are. Menendez came out against it, incidentally, last week. We talked about it Wednesday night. Senator Menendez uh, from New Jersey, uh, Hudson County, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, that's, that's, a bed, that's a bedroom community of New York City. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, wealthy Jewish folk live in that area, uh, supporters of APAC. So you can, you can understand Menendez, and he, uh, he, of course he's under indictment. He, he's in dire need of legal, um, uh, of uh, financial assistance for his legal struggle. So he's, he's, a, he's a handicapped individual at this point. And a lot of people thought that he would do that anyway because he's, all, you know, he's indicated his, his um, animus with Iran for many years uh, and so his, his, his opposition is not really that, that uh, strange. Um, we'll be back uh, right after this uh, and uh, finish talking about what's going on in the world. And then we'll talk to you and find out what's on your minds right after this. Connecting the dots in a complex world. Salim Muwakil will be right back on The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. There are all sorts of excuses for not saving energy. It's only one lamp. It's, it's just one TV. It's like all the way in the other room. What difference will it make if I turn things off when I'm done with them or not? If we switch to energy saving light bulbs or put in a programmable thermostat, how much energy and money could it possibly save? Sometimes I wonder if we could be more efficient with the energy we have now and tuck away more resources for later. You know, it just never hurts to plan more for the future. My name is Colin, and I'm going to get started today. We can all help save more energy for tomorrow. What's your excuse? For more energy-saving tips that also save money, visit loseyourexcuse.gov parents. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy, the Ad Council, and this station. The commentators. Controversial. Thought-provoking. Real. Amara Enya. From a policy perspective, the truth is that the problems of this state were known long before Governor Rauner was in the picture. Carl West. Has anyone really paid attention to what President Obama has attempted to do with his many trips to Africa, primarily Kenya, and his most recent trip to Ethiopia? 
Dr. Tiffany Sanders. When you wake up in the morning, make a commitment to do one thing every day that will get you closer to the next level. Mays Jackson. For our legislators, we need you to think black first, then party, because that's what they do oftentimes at our expense. The commentators are here. Weekdays at 9.20 a.m. and 5.20 p.m. This is WVON AM 1690, the talk of Chicago. Remember when you were a kid and your parents told you to go to bed? Boy, if you don't get in the bed. Well, you're an adult now, and there's a reason to stay the up. The B-Sides. Weeknights from midnight until 3 a.m. with Insane Wayne. All of your favorite cuts from back in the day. With Insane Wayne. Hey, boo-boo. Come on, babe. Weeknights from midnight until 3 o'clock. On the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON and iHeartRadio.com. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Have a banana. Eating well, have two bananas. And playing. <laughs> Come on, Baloo. Go together like best friends. You better believe it. With the food pyramid, the bare necessities of living healthy are easy. That bring the bare necessities of life. It gives you just the right amount of grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Crazy. So eat right. You eat ants? <laughs> You're going to love the way they tickle. Be active. <laughs> I'll move. That's it. And don't forget to have fun. <laughs> You're lots of fun, Baloo. <laughs> That's the way to be the best. <laughs> You're all right, kid. At anything you do. Yeah, man. You can go to MyPyramid.gov to play some games and find out more. Me and Baloo, we've got things to do. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Mozart talks, these are so very great. Kids rejoice when Mozart's on their plate. They know they're quite nutritious and so delicious. They'll lick the dishes and soon you'll realize how impactful your kids' involvement in the arts can be. They'll get better grades, make more friends, and express their individuality. T -t when they to play some music, act, or paint, or dance, or write creatively. Hot from the toaster and filled with the essential creative thinking skills of an 18th century musical genius, Mozart Toasties are an important part of an arts-healthy childhood. Studies show that involvement in the arts helps kids increase test scores and promotes academic achievement. Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. The arts. Ask for more. Brought to you by Americans for the Arts, the NAM Foundation, and the Ad Council. Wow, that's a lot of books. <laughs> Little one at home. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Childproofing your home, childproofing your yard, childproofing your in-laws' home and yard. Of all the things you can read to keep your child safe, the most important is attached to their car seat. Read the instruction manual and use the latch system. It makes it easier to be sure your child's car seat is installed correctly. Learn more at safercar.gov. Anchor, tether, latch the next generation of child safety. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. He's deeper than Lake Michigan. You're listening to Salim Wakil on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Seven thirty-seven. Salim Muwakil here on the Talk of Chicago, sixteen ninety WVON. Our number is five nine one one six nine zero sixteen ninety. That's it. Um, <clears throat> talking about the nuclear deal, you know, uh, 
It's important, y'all. Uh, as I noted uh, Wednesday, Sharpton, I read the Reverend Al Sharpton is uh, urging churches to get in on this uh, and, and, and urge their legislators to uh, vote yes. <clears throat> his angle, his angle is that, it, you know, the, the only alternative to this is, is probably war. And, and many people, you know, speculate that Israel, in the one, the, the primary uh, force against the deal, um, wants to wants to um, ignite a, a a conflict with Iran, and and actually Israel wants the U.S. to do it, uh, and so there's a likelihood that we will again be embroiled in some military adventure in that part of the world, that part of the planet. Um, so. Uh, Sharpton is arguing that uh, black people should be very, very opposed to that alternative uh, of war and go with diplomacy, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, accept the, the counsel of all of these uh, arms control experts who say that this deal is the best thing that we could possibly get. Um, especially when you consider the fact. There are all kinds of uh, issues here. The, the, the Iranian uh, culture, the, the Persian sensibility of Iran is, is one of uh, non-aggression, really, with, with, uh, with neighboring states. Um, and, and, and that goes with the contemporary history of Iran. It has never invaded uh, a neighboring country, much less a country thousands of miles away, as, as, you know, as the U.S. regularly does. Um, there's been no neighbor that has been attacked by by this by this Persian this former Persian Empire and and now Iran of, of the Islamic Republic of Iran the twelver version of, of of Shia Islam that Iran subscribes to thinks of nuclear weapons as something that is actually shirk um, what they would consider shirk or um, something that is polytheistic it it it, it posits a deity, a force other than the creator that can change things. And, and so they, they don't even have a theological justification for a nuclear weapon. So um, there, there's so much to be considered in this. And, and this is in addition to the, the pragmatic aspect of, uh, it, it, you know, dip diplomacy is always better than war. I mean, that, that's, that's what civilization means, isn't it? Anyway. Uh, so that's a, that's how we stand now. And, and crucial news from uh, Greece: the Prime Minister Alex Tsipras uh, he announced that he he would resign um, because he's become very unpopular among the leftists who who elected him in the first place because he he conceded to the creditors, um, the EU creditors, and this move he said will give him the opportunity. To, uh, to 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 uh, forge a deal because he, if he resigns, they'll have another election. Uh, Cyprus lost a lot of a lot of support of, of his left-leaning uh, Syriza party, or or the more radical members. Some still stick, are sticking with him, um, but they they oppose his backing of the uh, of this international deal. <clears throat> uh, and they said it is just more austerity, and and not. You know, and goes against their their whole reason for existence, and so we'll see what happens. A lot of uh, the, the you know the experts expect Cyprus to be to be re, uh, elected, reelected, um, and and then he'll have a mandate to uh, enact this deal, which is which a lot of the uh, on the left uh, oppose, and those who are more centrist think that it's the best thing they can get. Uh, another one of those kinds of situations. Um, <clears throat> New data shows that July was the warmest month ever on record. July. Uh, you couldn't tell that by Chicago, of course. I think July was one of Chicago's coolest on, on record. Uh, you know, I wonder if when the world burns up, I wonder if we'll get a reprieve on that. Um, I, I doubt it. But anyway, <clears throat> the U.S. National o o o Oceanic and, and Atmospheric Administration they 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 you know made it plain that 2015 has been the hottest year on record so far. That's that's uh, <clears throat> you know pretty 
um, dire news for those who understand the implications of anthropogenic climate change and, and, and the kind of havoc that will eventually wreck on, um, on, uh, on, on the planet, and including Chicago, ultimately. All right, let's go to the phones and find out what's on your mind. Let's go to, um, let's see here, who do we have? Oh, man, let's go to Studious Damon. Hey, Studious, how you doing, my brother? I'm just studying black history because I don't want it to be no mystery. All right, my What's brother. up, Salim? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Good all to right. hear your voice, That's good brother. to hear. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And it's always uh, always great to hear your voice. And yes, hello to the VON fam. Thanks for taking my call. Um, you know, concerning the Dragonflies conversation, I'm, I'm glad Hunter mentioned that uh, he appreciated our conversation concerning Dragonflies. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated his contribution to the conversation. And I was just hoping... Mm -hmm. That may be why they were there. I guess they gone now. Let, let, let me, let me. Uh, you know, sometimes people uh, tune in. They don't, they, and they haven't listened to the past shows, so they may not okay. have any idea what we're talking about. Uh, what what Studious is talking about, uh, you know, is there. There had been a kind of a dragonfly infestation in Chicago. Uh, so so dramatic it had been. It made the front page of the Tribune, where they talked about. The, you know, the summer of the dragonfly, that's what they were calling this. Um, and uh, so I, I was talking about some of my exploits on, on the bike path with, with these dragonflies, how they had begun to become very, very uh, um, omnipresent. Everywhere you look, they were, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't escape. So that's, that's the context. You, so you were saying, my brother. Yeah, oh, yeah, and I was just saying, I was hoping... While they were there, they, um, of course they gone now. But if you could have told a couple of them to come about five hours east, or uh -huh. maybe four and a half hours east uh -huh. over to Toledo, because we <laughs> sure had a big amount of gnats oh, that really? those dragonflies could have feasted on, oh, man, it and it would have been great. You know, they, those green garners can fly about uh, 35 miles per hour, so it, was, it took them... <laughs> I'm they might have been able to get here. <laughs> they, just needed, yeah. they just needed some direction, man. They needed a yeah. dragonfly uh, uh, pie pipe yeah. or something, right? Yeah. But um, also, I want to thank Maceo uh, for confirming with me that he mentioned some time ago for people to watch the documentary concerning Marcus Garvey entitled Look for Me in the Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. If you, anyone is interested, go to YouTube and type in Marcus Garvey, Look for Me in the Whirlwind. I want to thank uh, Maceo for mentioning that. That was an excellent um, documentary. I've, mm -hmm. I've watched it about, I'm trying to watch it a second time, mm -hmm. but I, I've watched it, and uh, I think what, what Marcus Garvey did was was really remarkable for the growth of black people in his quest to create an independent black nation. You know, I, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he leaves a, a legacy that influenced, um, Elijah Muhammad, you know, influenced, uh, Malcolm X's parents and, and, and Malcolm X mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, influenced uh, the Rastafarianism, right? you know, um, and, and, and it's not that Marcus Garvey didn't have his faults, you know, um, but what he did overall was was just tremendous to me. I mean, you know, he had the the, the thing where in the documentary they talked about that um, he used some contributions for um, for this school that he wanted to build to pay for his own living expenses, and um, he ended up leaving uh, leaving Jamaica, and people put pressure on him about an account of that money in Jamaica. And then you know, some people want to argue about. Him um, going to meet in, in Atlanta with the uh, with the Ku Klux Klan, but I think you know even looking at that, I was doing a little bit of reading on that myself. He 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 was looking at groups who were there to try to help send blacks back to Africa because that's one of the things he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he he met with the Ku Klux Klan to try to get I don't know some finance or, or whatever. And I know from from doing some other readings, um, Wikipedia and the National Humanity Center dot org. Um, 
he he met with the Klan. I know there was he, there was supposed to be some discussion about miscegenation and uh, social equality, and then um, who was the other? There was something else that was on Wikipedia. I, f- I forgot that reason, but you know those are some of the things that um, people may want to look at it as his fault. But overall, I just thought that what he did was tremendous. And uh, if if anybody wants to look at that documentary, again, just type, just go to YouTube and type in Marcus Garvey, look for me in the whirlwind. Well, they just had, you know, they just had their uh, <clears throat> their celebration uh, this this week. So you and I, okay. is, is, you know, is, is, is uh, rising in estimation uh, even as we speak. And Mark, Marcus Garvey's uh, uh, accomplishments are becoming much, much wider known uh, by, and- by the black community. And then the thing, though, that um, kind of worry, worries me a little bit is that I'm, you know, just talking around here in Toledo, just, you know, word of mouth, trying to pass along the, you know, the documentary about Marcus Garvey. Some people who are older than me don't know who Marcus Garvey is, uh, you know, a couple of people, mm. or, you know, they don't know that much about him. So if, if Marcus Garvey may be kind of common amongst your your audience Mm -hmm. because you know there's so much talk about him but you know outside different audiences when you just talk to um black people who may not be about the movement you know he's he's not so common and 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 i was fortunate enough to be able to attend um when you were talking about Marcus Garvey, that they had a celebration, you know, when I was there at the Taste of WVON, I mm-hmm. was able to attend. Uh, the UNIA had a uh, celebration about him mm-hmm. uh, the following day, right. and I thought that that was great. Yes, sir. All right, Brother Studios. Thank you. Appreciate it, my okay. brother. All, All right. right. Stay wise. Brother Studios, let's go to uh, Mr. Wells. Hey, my brother. How are you, sir? Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, I'm, man? I'm well. We're like salam. Yeah, man, got some running in the day, man. But I tell you, getting older, I feel like these salts just leave the body when you sweat, man. I had to go out and get me some kosher salt. Because <laughs> I get uh, at night, man, those Charlie horses at night have been so prevalent. Oh, man, yeah. Like, that, 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 it, when you first, that ha- really happens when you really sweat a lot, man. And if, if you don't re- replace those electrolytes, man, you. Yeah, you, and I did, about, I did about four miles, and then I walked about another four miles a day, so 91 degree weather. But, mm. so, I mean, a couple of things. I like to continue the conversation from Wednesday. I like to respond about this Iran deal and why mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a thumbs down on it, like I communicated to Matt. And then I like to um, uh, make a quick comment about Dr. Ben Yachman and that relative to, uh, we, we discussed this with a, uh, with a Shelby, I don't support the Iranian deal. And it's not because I'm, a, I'm an Obama hater. Now, going back to Wednesday, I think we should be very fair and clear about this record. If you all like to just you voted for him twice, be accountable for your choices. If you said you voted for him, it was, we, we vote in secret ballot, but we all know it's a secret ballot. You go in there in secret, and if you disclose to somebody, whatever, you know, you voted. Now, my point that I think is very unfair with this Obama situation. The gentleman in the White House who won the election in 2008, 2012, he sent Lindsey Graham, John McCain, to represent the U.S. He didn't send the Secretary of State. People are saying that Lindsey Graham and John McCain are responsible for that dispersion of talent, like people change jerseys from the Patriots to the Bears to the Buccaneers. If that talent pool that came out, that deal they did to Brother Muammar Gaddafi, as we call it, Omar Gaddafi, if that group became Daesh, is what they say, it was Graham and McCain that did that. And people say that group, the the Sisters group, comes out of McCain and Lindsey Graham's activities. It was Obama that sent them over there. Yes, sir. We need to be fair about that. I don't don't have any uh, uh, dispute with that assessment. Okay, so 
So I'm, I'm just saying, let's be fair. If we say that it's who started this diet and then this Jewish guy. Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I don't think you could say they actually started it, but they certainly they certainly enabled it. Let, let, oh, let yeah, me so put it that. So, so I'm just saying, if we're gonna have conversations, if your man that you like has done something that's on the wrong side of history, well, I, I, I have no problem. You know, man, I have no problem criticizing the president's foreign policy. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's criticism. I'm just saying, let's do a, a fair accounting of the of the administrative administrative activities. Uh, and then Celine, now at some point, with with Dr. B and, and other people who people rely on as commentators. Now I'm doing, I, I run the paces on information. And when somebody says, well, Wells, here's my position about this, that, and the other, I'm a messianic Israelite. I don't let my belief system overrun a conversation and think, like, well, um, if I know something is maybe would, would diminish or marginalize my argument. And I have the the microphone. I'm not going to admit, like, my argument or my position right now may be not understood by people and is somewhat flawed or defective has a shortcoming. People at some point, this reference to Dr. Ben and other Afrocentrists who are atheists, we must have that conversation. Because, see, people may love Dr. Ben all they want. There's been one person, Serene, that I've talked to about Dr. Ben, and this person had an honest conversation, said, you know what, brother? Ben had his issues, and his doctor. Oh, no Lee doubt about it. For three, I want people. I talked to Doctor Jesse for three hours one night after he was on another talk show. He is the only person that's given out his number and say, "Call me if you want to talk." I've called fifty people. They say, "Man, email me, call me." I get. They never do it. Doctor Leonard Jeffries is the only one. We had a serious conversation about Doctor Ben. Why Doctor Ben may have written a certain kind of way with some gripe against Judaism. And see, people don't want to admit that. He, he, he may have written a certain way because of something that happened to his father coming out of Ethiopia, and Dr. Dean had an axe to grind against Judaism because of what happened to his daddy in Ethiopia. And people don't want to admit that, Celine. Well, but, but, but that's not, but Mr. Wells, um, you know, even if you incorporate any possible gripe, the, the, the thing that distinguishes Dr. Ben is his scholarship. It's not his, his polemics, but, but, but listen it's his scholarship. Celine. And so, um, you know, his, it would be difficult to, to, to disguise, um, you know, scholarly insights with, with uh, you know, any kind of uh, religious bias against but Judaism. Let me, but let me explain why. Mm -hmm. If a person knows that certain bodies of knowledge, if you say, well, the calendar appeared in Kemet 10,000 B.C., it didn't appear to everybody. Most, and even when I talk to my brother from Ethiopia, most of these esoteric, esoteric considerations, it's like a, a, a smaller than 1% percent, percent of the population, the very learned, priestly, that bloodline where we go to those people to get answers, and we get questions answered. Mm -hmm. A lot of this body, it's not with the common lay people. That's so right. when you say it appears in a culture, it's only appearing with less than 1% of the people. Well, no, but, but uh, no, what happens in these kind of cultures, you know, that they, that they have this uh, hierarchical effect. Whatever the okay, whatever whatever the elite believe ultimately filters down to the to the to the common people to the okay you know. and, and, and then I want to wrap it up here mm -hmm. now it's it's quite clear that if the oral tradition is older than the written tradition just cause, just because Kemet organized and put it on paper does not mean everybody else had knowledge it was not practice it it was an, it was the folk tale is the one thing we do oral. The, the folk tale stays oral. When it's written down, it becomes written. Some things were meant to be oral, so there would be direct interaction on, on transmission. If, 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 if people want to say, well, Kemet wrote it first, that doesn't mean they had first knowledge. That means they wrote it first. <laughs> and the oral tradition supersedes all written tradition. We know this. So when people say, oh, 10,000 years, convention, man, look, you got oral tradition going back maybe, maybe 100,000 years, bro, and folks didn't have to write it down because they were clear on who they were communicating to, there was good memory, and there was a high standard of ethics not to change the document for the benefit of self. Yes, sir. I, I have so we, no I have no dispute with that, brother. Or so, so oral right, tradition is say, deep. And, 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 uh, and look, and, oral and, tradition supersedes. All right, man. Thank tradition. you, brother. <clears throat> See, when, when a brother starts to... Not listen uh, and, and and prevent the dialogue from happening. That's when it. And and I, I got it. I got his point. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what uh, relevance it has in many ways because um, <clears throat> I think uh, what 
what uh, the brother's trying to say is that um, Kemet does, the, when Shelby referenced Ben Yakinen's research that um, much of what we see in the, in Western monarch you know, and the, the idea of Western uh, mon monotheism or Abrahamic monotheism was predated by thousands, by millennium in, in, in Kemet. Um, I think what, uh, what um, Mr. Wells is trying to say that just because it seems that Kemet wrote it down doesn't mean it was it was first, but yeah, I, I don't. It's hard to understand the point. Let's go to Taylor. Hey, man, how are you, sir? Hey, how are you, Salim? Doing well, my brother. I had to get off the speakerphone there, Salim. I'm going to try to make some quick points. I try to save you as much time as possible. Okay. These other guys get quite a bit. I'm speaking from uh, what this nun that's 90 years old told me that the 60s emotions has turned into a virus, and combining it what Dick Gregory said, that the next movement was supposed to be mental. The first one was physical. And I'm a descendant of Chief Tuscaloosa in Alabama. And in Chicago, you have the Tuscaloosa Reunion Club, which was founded you know, in the you, uh, Mr. Taylor, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, brother, I'm going to hold you over um, <laughs> <laughs> for the, uh, if you if you uh, want to stay over. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, because I'll, I, I, you, I you're in the stream of consciousness there, and I, I don't want to I don't want to lose it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, maybe, maybe I can catch it, but I want to hold you over. No, no, oh, you'll so, get it. All right. You'll get it. All okay. right, brother. We'll, uh, we'll be back with uh, Brother Taylor. After uh, this break, and and uh, you know, hear hear what, what the brother has to say. Always um, innovative conversation from the brother. We'll check it out. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. Sixteen ninety WVON Berwyn, Chicago. Still ablaze. I'm Ann Cates. President Barack Obama has congratulated the three American friends who helped thwart a terrorist attack on a train headed to Paris. And the trio will meet Monday with the president of France as investigators look into the background of the gunman. Correspondent Nick Robertson. We understand from European counterterrorism officials that they believe this Moroccan had gone from Europe to Turkey with the intent to try to connect with ISIS. Thousands of firefighters are still battling dozens of wildfires throughout the West. Correspondent Stephanie Elam. With resources stretched thin, about 200 active duty soldiers from Joint Base Lewis McCord are joining the fight against the fires. The situation is so desperate, the state is now asking volunteers to help dig fire lines. One major wildfire in north central Washington state continues to grow in size. Idaho has the most fires, 17 major ones. Wildfires in California burning for three weeks. I'm Ann Cates. The National Zoo in Washington has welcomed a new baby giant panda. Correspondent Brad Freitas was there. The Smithsonian announced Mei Zhang was showing signs of labor early Saturday morning. Panda lover Tina hustled down and stood watch outside the exhibit for hours, anxiously watching the panda cam big screen. It's very emotional. <laughs> I've been yeah. coming here since I was four years old with my pap, and I haven't been back since he passed. Zoo director Dennis Kelly says no sex has been determined, and right now they're just letting mother and baby have their bonding time and hoping for good health. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, but this is still a very fragile time for uh, this cub. From the National Zoo, Brad Freitas, Washington. A beach in Santa Barbara County, California, has been closed while authorities try to determine the source of smelly oil and tar balls that have washed ashore. Summerlin Beach is off limits as strong petroleum odors and oily substances have increased and have let the officials have determined the threat to the public. I'm Ann Cates. She fell in love with my blue eyes. But that love is dead Yeah Been wearing old contacts Now my eyes are all red Girl Why'd I run out of contacts? I see nothing clear Itchy eyes, old lenses I can't hold back my tears I run out of contacts Wish I could see you again Get free expedited shipping on all app orders Never run out of contacts 1-800-CONTACTS
Geico applauds your inner happy camper. A merit badge of awesomeness goes out to the part of you that wants to put the recreation in recreational vehicle. The part of you that packs up everything and everybody in the RV and says, let's get this show on the road. Because Geico has specialized agents who help save money on more than just car insurance. Geico will insure that entire RV. So you can get the s'more making, poison ivy dodging, same song singing, ghost storytelling, campfire building, best time you ever had with your family, show on the road. Geico for your RV. See how much you could save. Lobsters are heading north and ocean warming is taking the blame. Correspondent Joe Ramsey has more. The number of lobsters now at their lowest levels on record in southern New England while climbing to heights never before seen in the cold waters off Maine and other northern reaches. A shift scientists are attributing to the warming of the ocean. You may not have noticed because the price of lobsters hasn't changed because the supply hasn't changed. But the trend is driving lobstermen in Connecticut and Rhode Island out of business, ending a centuries-old way of life. Meanwhile, Maine fishermen have landed more than 100 million pounds of lobster for four years in a row, by far the highest four-year haul in the state's history. I'm Joe Ramsey. A petition drive is underway to get Olympic diver Greg Luganis on the cover of Wheaties cereal. According to the New York Times, a petition on change.org demands that General Mills correct an omission that has lasted more than 30 years. Luganis won Olympic medals in 1976, 1984, and in 1988. I'm Ann Cates. <laughs> Did you know that there's a free app that turns your mobile device into a personal radio station? With RDO, that's R-D-I-O, listen to this station live, wherever you are. Your favorite artists and your favorite songs, with a whole new way to listen. Plus, RDO has countless free stations powered by millions of songs. Go to RDO.com slash live, and instantly, you've got your songs right where you want them. That's RDO. Music tuned to you. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger. For the ones... Tired of listening to the same old songs over and over again? What we're going to do right here is go back, way back, back into time. Listen to Insane Wayne with the B-Side. Weeknights from 12 until 3 o'clock in the morning. He'll take you back. It's Insane Wayne with the B-Sides, 12 to 3 a.m. on 1690 WVON, the talk of Chicago. I was facing foreclosure. I was desperate to get help wherever I could. They promised they would help me. It seemed legitimate. I paid them a fee and never heard from them again. I lost thousands of dollars and my home. Every day, loan modification scammers target homeowners who are worried about foreclosure. Anyone can be a victim, but you don't have to be. Avoid any person or company who asks for a fee in advance, who guarantees they can stop a foreclosure or modify a loan, or who tells you to stop paying your mortgage company. For trusted, government-approved help and to report a scam, call 1-888-995-HOPE. That's 1-888-995-995. 4673. You can also visit www.loanscamalert.org. Information is your best defense. Know the signs. Get the facts. Snake a doodle shortbread, fudgy nut bars. How many treats? Snake a doodle shortbread, fudgy nut bars. How many treats in the cookie jar? One. Dad, you're supposed to jump over the rope. <laughs> One more time. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 1-877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Wow, that's a lot of books. <laughs> Little one at home. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Childproofing your home, childproofing your yard, childproofing your in-laws' home and yard. Of all the things you can read to keep your child safe, the most important is attached to their car seat. Read the instruction manual and use the latch system. It makes it easier to be sure your child's car seat is installed correctly. Learn more at safercar.gov. Anchor, tether, latch. 
the next generation of child safety. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ag Council. Hey, what's up? Thinking about you. XOXOXO. Want to snuggle? Dot, dot, dot. JK, hit me back. You getting these texts? Question mark. We should hang later. I miss you. Holla at your boy. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. Are you at home? Where are you? What are you doing? OMG. You are making me mad. Are you with your ex? You better text me back. I'm waiting outside your house. Relentless, aggressive texting is like sending an angry robot to deliver your message. When does the robot become dangerous? Let us know at that's not cool.com. That's not cool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. We're your original social media. Hashtag Celine Muwakil on 1690, the talk of Chicago. On August 22nd, Salim Muwakio here on the Talk of Chicago. Our number is 591-1690. That was Humberto Ramirez. Uh, Humberto Ramirez. Uh, and um, a Latin tribute to Miles. Someday my prince will come uh, was the name of that particular cut. And we are going to go. Um, back to the phones. Brother Marvin, good evening. How are you, sir? Oh, hey, how's Ma- going, Mar- Marvin, you know what? Hold on, man. I got I got Brother Taylor. Hey, Hold Taylor, on. I yes, sir. All right. Taylor, hey, man. I'm yes, sorry, my brother. Go ahead. No problem. No problem, Salim. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my mother in read the Chicago Defender when she was pregnant with me, so I feel very deep down there with you in the lake. <laughs> uh, and the other point I wanted to add very quickly here, Salim, my life has turned into a Pandora's box. And mm. in this Pandora's box are the deeds of African Americans' property, their churches, and their universities. Now, the other point I want to make here is this. I'm between Chickasaw and Choctaw, India. Mm-hmm. When I'm at peace, I'm Choctaw. But when I'm not at peace, I won't tell you what they are. I'll let you look that up. (laughs) But the reason that uh, I'm saying this in the way that I am, when the Ferguson verdict was Well, these were different, these differing uh, tribes had different sensibilities. One was war. They're they're out of of the Alabama. Mm -hmm. Chief Tuscaloosa met the Spanish in 1450 in Mobile, Alabama. And I was saying when we went off the air that in Chicago, the Tuscaloosa Union Club was founded (laughs) in the early 40s, and I think they're about... Ten uh, chapters around the country today, but I'm giving you some extremely important history here. Cause see, when I don't get a chance to make my points on the radio, I'm taking it out in the Southern Association of Colleges, so I know how to unaccredit a black institution to make my point. Mm. Yeah, and the other point is this: we lost our property in the '60s due to the pursuit of the vote, and only two people have believed me: this nun. And this uh, preacher here that's been in the pulpit for about 50-some years, he just retired. 
But what I'm trying to get across to African Americans is my Choctaw and Chickasaw Indian has leavened my African ancestry, which is Ibu. My father's folks come out of San Salvador in the Bahamas. And so it's something happened here. And when I met the historian in Norfolk, Alabama, I told him my, Jim, my, my great-grandfather named Jim Crummy, he said, my God, he didn't play with black folks or whites. And they told us as we get old, this stuff come out of us. And I believe it's coming out of me now. Mm. And the main last point is this. See, I have encountered two Omega sci-fi here in uh, Nashville. And they've done something, and on their website they say teaching African Americans how to interact with police. And one of these is a police officer, and another one in the Black Culture Center at Vanderbilt. They have shaken this box, which has these deeds of the African American property in it, and it has the deeds of black churches, and also our black university. And my spiritual father, Dr. Wes Harvey, was the soundest Baptist preacher in the state of Alabama. Oh. And you better look carefully at Mobile and why Donald Trump was yes. down there in Mobile. Yes. These things ain't no joke. And my father was... Well, why was he down there? What do you think he was down there for? Well, it's the history of the place. Dr. C.A. Tunstall, who pastored the oldest Baptist church, the uh, Stone Street Baptist Church, was an Omega Sci-Fi that paid most of my tuition to go to college. So you all got those radios up there, those stations and things, but a lot of your stations are not older than 50 years old. Listen to WJLD sometime in Birmingham, which is about 73 years old. All right, all right, old. my brother. Thank you, Taylor. I was, I, 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 one I last knew... point. One okay. last point. All right, very okay, quickly, please, point. brother. This yes, sir. <laughs> okay. If I don't get my points in, you're going to see from me in four historical black colleges will be unabated. But, uh, but see, but the, the question, though, Taylor, is what are your points? Your points are always so varied that they, they don't seem yeah, to have... Have to be very because I've been cut off so many times, so many different stations. But I'm just letting you know if I don't get my point when you hear about. Well, the so, 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 who do you blame for that? Say what? Oh, well, it's easy. Pro Dil Bill uh, Dick Gregory has said the first movement was physical uh, and the second one was mental. Y'all are repeating the second movement in right. that radio. Uh, thank it's you, my brother. I appreciate it, Taylor. I, I, I keep trying. Um, and, and you know. You know, I don't want to sound condescending, but um, that was good information. You know, Ebo, Choctaw, uh, Ch Choctaw and Chickasaw. I mean, um, I've heard similar kinds of uh, divisions between those two, those two tribal uh, sensibilities, one warlike, one um, pacific. Um, and to hear him, you know, echo that is, is an interesting it's an interesting, you know, uh, comment on, on that on that uh, on that observation. And Ebo, uh, there are a lot of African Americans, and you know, e e Ebo's there's a characteristic quality about Ebo. And if you if you are you know a serious um, observer of, of of African physiognomy, um, you you can see you you can you can discern. Well, what tribal group a lot of our folks come from. Uh, e e Ebo is distinctive, and, and, and if you know what to look for, you can discern Ebo characteristics in many of our people. Um, and, and many other tribal groups. It's, it's an interesting uh, exercise. Let's go back to the phones. Brother Allen, hey, man, how are you, sir? How you doing, Brother Salih? I always enjoy Brother Tannigan. My great-grandmother was from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'll be listening. I'm just saying, y'all be going at it. I'm saying that everybody else listening, too, because I have relatives. That's, I found my lost lost great uncle down there in Tuscaloosa mm -hmm. on the Internet. Yeah, they, they were similar. It was similar on Check Dog. I can't remember what Indian, but my grandma told me because I got eyebrows like an Indian. Check this out, Brother Slee. Okay. You know, we want African American to win, but we might lose the White House. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump represents that white cop, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, what they call it, uh, the, the the man. What's the word I'm trying to say? Uh, you know, you know they always paint the Democrat. We always create that uh, the boogeyman. Well, I can't think of that word I'm looking for. Mm. But this what I'm saying. Donald Trump represents the police because he uh, uh, he polarized New York with some kind of Central Park uh, crime way back in the day, and I remember yes, that. Yes, he did. Check this out. You know, Al Gore uh, he pushes the green uh, movement, and uh, in order for Hillary to win the South. Bill Clinton was a hell of a politician. 
This is why I say I hope Hillary listened to her husband. Al Gore won the state of Florida in 2000. You remember no hanging chad? Yes, sir. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying, that if we don't get, like, Al Gore and uh, Willie Wilson not going to win, uh, Bernie Sanders, I'm just saying that President Obama didn't waste a lot of time in the South because he said they're not going to vote for me anyway. I can be Jesus. They're not going to vote for me. Mm. He knew that. I'm mm. saying Joseph Biden is uh, diluting up. Well, he uh, did. He did win um, South Carolina. He won Florida, too. Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm saying, but I'm, sure, I'm saying we want to win the White House. You know, winning state by state by state. And uh, and a lot of times, you know, the backlash coming from Hillary. Mm-hmm. When Reverend Al said, Hillary is my friend. Then Donald Trump said, well, Hillary is my friend. Most people, we love Reverend Al called African-American people. We adore him. But the Dixocrats don't like Reverend Al. They don't like him at all. You're right. <laughs> so if we want to win the White House, and this is what I said, that we had to get Al Gore. Bernie Sanders, because I'm so so you don't you you just don't think that the South will go for Hillary, huh? Hell no, they ain't vote for no man. I'm, I'm being honest. Mm. There's no women governor. There's no women mayor. I'm straight from the. What what about what about um um from from South Carolina? The the governor of South Carolina is a woman. Oh yeah, I'm saying her name Nikki Haley, but I'm just saying, but she's a Republican. I'm just saying that she uh, I don't know how she got in, but I'm just saying that uh. South Carolina was a determining factor between President Obama and Hillary. You remember when? Uh, yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember. Remember this guy with shine eye shoes? The South is not going to change. The South want to. <laughs> I don't want to. The South they always want to rise again. See, Donald Trump represent that white man, that yeah. white man on that horse. Yeah. I'm just being honest that if we don't, no, win Florida, it, it seemed to be pretty obvious. South Carolina, that's all. Yeah, mm-hmm. he represent the, the policemen, you know, down mm. south because these brothers out here. They you didn't. Like you didn't mean the South. establishment, did you? Was that the yeah. word you were looking for? Yeah, the establishment. Uh, okay. Yeah, he 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 represents <laughs> that because he's so divisive. Because minority, we have our first African American uh, president. I'm saying President Obama, Bill Clinton, Al Gore need to team up so we can win the South because President Obama he won the North. Mm-hmm. Joseph Biden, uh, he uh, he helped President Obama. Do you to think? Win the do you North. think Biden? Do you think Biden has a chance in the South? No, not in the South because you know people. You know how people feel about the Jews. You know that. I'm being honest. <laughs> well, Biden, yeah, I mean, Bi- Biden is is uh, not Jewish. No, but he said. You remember when he said this word. Those people in the South will put y'all in chains. They don't yeah. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be reminded of that. And I'm saying <laughs> that Al Gore can uh, and uh, Bill Clinton. I think they can uh, use their expertise and win the South. Because uh, Bill Clinton won, and nobody knew his name. You remember that song, Cheers? Nobody, nobody. Uh, well, well can't, uh, Bill couldn't Bill Clinton combine uh, forces with his wife uh, and, right. and do the same thing? That's why I said, you know, the Bible said about the man, I hope the man is in charge because I, I like it. I read my Bible all the time. I hope Hillary listens to her husband because he has a proven track record of winning twice. That's true. All right, man. Thank you, Thanks Alan. You Appreciate it, bro. All right. Alan's right. Um... Bill has been um, a wizard uh, in in the South, and and a lot of folks had written Democrats off um, many times, and and uh, Bill has managed to do it. All right, let's go back to the phones. Kevin, hey Kevin, how you doing, my brother? Hey, brother Celine. Yay. Is is uh, Donald Trump going to send immigration after Mark Rubio? Because <laughs> he sure is an anchor baby, if if he ever. Because uh, his parents were not citizens. Uh, oh, he, neither, neither was Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal, okay. Bobby and Jindal's he, an anchor baby too. Possibly you know? his, possibly Trump's own. Uh, his own. He needs to look at his own lineage as well. That's true. That's he true. might be uh, caught in some rock now at the bottom of the ocean. But that's not what I call for, brother. <laughs> I want to uh, talk about the briefly talk about the two women who. Um, got who were awarded the coveted Rangers tab. Mm, yes, sir. That was a big uh, chunk of news, wasn't it? Uh-huh. And you, already you have the uh, misogynists out saying that they lowered the standards, but the Army is saying that they didn't lower the standards. They no, they didn't. They, uh, in fact, all the cats who talked about, um, you know, the, all of their uh, teammates said that they were extraordinary, that they were taking the, you know, they were taking the load when, when other, other folks were, were giving it up. And exactly. Now, imagine this, Celine. Just to get in, you have to be able to do uh, about fifty push-ups. 50 yeah, man, it, it's a rough, it's a rough regime. A, a, a five mile run in like forty minutes. Mm-hmm. You got to do uh, that sixteen mile hike with the uh, sixty-five pound pack. 
You got to swim 15 meters. You got to do all of that with three or four hours of sleep on one, maybe two meals a day. Yes, sir. Uh, that's rough. That's rough. So I, I want to talk about the imagery of women and how it's changing. Mm-hmm. And also tie that in with um, our sister, you know, the one who wrote Bees in a Trap. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> well, bees in a Trap, and they put her in wax, at least her butt wax, and they put her <laughs> on all fours. Mm-hmm. And you have, now she's concerned about her imagery. But I would say to Sister uh, Minaj, if you knew your history, you would know about Sarah Bartman. Mm, the the um, Venus. Yes, the Venus, and I'm sure you know, and, and most of the stoop calls know, but maybe one day you can do a deeper dive on Sarah Bartman if you haven't already, and I missed it. But I would like to see you do that. Um, but briefly, Sarah Bartman had, uh, she was a South African um, young lady who was tricked to go to London, and he, she was tricked because she had uh, very pronounced uh, portions of her anatomy, namely her, her behind and her breasts. And um, her female anatomy was, um, the, the labia was somewhat protruding or was more pronounced. And so <laughs> yes, they thought indeed. this was an oddity. Mm-hmm. And she was paraded around like a circus animal. Indeed, exactly like a circus animal. Mm-hmm. And what you see is you see uh, someone like Nicki Minaj who's going to be paraded around. Well, not paraded around, she's going to be stationary. But people are already riding her back. Like she's some type of sex goddess. They call uh, Sarah Bartman the Venus, the hot and tight. Hot and tight Venus. Hot and tight Venus, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a parallel to that when we start to talk about things like uh, uh, the video vixens and and uh, objectification of women. I think that a lot of sisters need to go back and really look into what happened, the tragic story of Sarah Bartman. Yes, indeed. And, and my last point, brother, is... I was uh, so elated to hear uh, the brother minister come out and direct African-American dollars or <laughs> freezing African-American dollars during the holiday seasons. And that's we right. Can't, that's right. We can't leave this brother out here. So I've already talked to a lot of members of my family, mm-hmm. and we've already had this discussion. We I think it's going to catch on, man. I, I sure hope it does. Yes, I mean, I think that that's probably, you have a lot of brothers out here, Salim, who are talk, they're so emotional right now mm-hmm. that they want to do something inflammatory that can get people hurt. Mm-hmm. That's not the avenue to do But you know, you know uh, incidentally, man, this is another thing that, that Minister Farrakhan does that is really, um, I, it's extraordinary in, in its psychological insight, is that mm-hmm. he captures that militants in a way few can capture it. And 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 he and when he channels it, um, you know, f- folks don't feel as if they've been manipulated. You know right. what I mean? Like, and he's. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. And, and so you are absolutely right. He's channeling it in such a way that it's, it becomes productive. Mm-hmm. It's way more productive to do to not use your dollars than to throw bricks. Yes, sir. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I've. I can't wait to see what it's like when the day uh, after Thanksgiving, and usually uh, it's they don't even wait anymore to the day after Thanksgiving. They start as soon as you you finish your last meal in Birch, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, but I would love to see what it's like for that entire last part of November, all of December, to see us not be present at all. Black Friday needs to truly be Black Friday. And we need to send a message to this nation that, as according to uh, the minister, that we want to redistribute some of this pain. And since you don't understand the pain we're talking about, maybe you can understand the pain in your pocket. Mm. And so I think we all need to be on board with this and not leave this brother out here. And like I said, I've been... Um, talking with my uh, family members and my friends. We're not spending the dime. Here's one other thing we can do, though. We can take money that we were going to spend um, for the Christmas season and open up accounts for our children mm. and do that in black banks. That's the gift you ought to give them. If you want to give them a gift, go open up them an account in a black bank and give them a book. Go ahead, brother. Sounds like a plan to me. 
And I've been listening, man, and you do an outstanding job, brother. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it, brother. You do, too. You're welcome. Take care, man. You too. All right, yeah, you know what Kevin's talking about. I don't know if any of you uh, heard this. I'm sure many of you did. Uh, Minister Farrakhan is, is talking about uh, boycotting Black Friday withholding funds, uh, changing your consumer habits to omit Black Friday from your agenda. Um, so that's, that's on the, that's on the uh, table. Uh, when the minister says uh, justice or else, um, that's one of the or else's. Or as um, uh, Brother Bob Law has said, no justice, no profits. No justice, no profits. Um, that sounds like a, <laughs> a, a very um, effective battle cry to me. Shelby, good evening, my brother. How are you, sir? Hey, what's happening, Brother Salim? I'm all right, man. As always, uh, much respect, and I, I really thank you for your show. Brother Salim, I want to try to cover a lot of topics. Uh, I saw Hillary Clinton uh, on one of the news channels, and sitting right in the front row was Dr. College's son. Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, okay, because that was interesting, man. Farrah Gray, you know who I'm talking about? Yes, sir, I do know. I'm very suspicious because they brought him there to the White House and opposed, supposedly wrote a book, and he's a multimillionaire and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was, I was, uh, I was doubtful because he he never even acknowledged his father, uh, Brother Salim. Yeah, that there, there was a lot. You know, there's been a lot of discussion about okay. about him. And also, he changed mm -hmm. his name. That's not his name, Farrah Gray. Right. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there. Now, you know, Brother Salim, I looked at the Center for Disease Control 2013 data on homicide on on, on uh, deaths, and it seems like, according to their data, that half of all black men died of either. Uh, heart disease or cancer? Mm-hmm. Fifty percent. Now, five percent died from homicide. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Salim, if you ever ask about the die, is there ten times more discussion about heart disease and uh, and cancer than it is about uh, homicides? You don't get that, right? Uh, not. So there's a distortion. There's a distortion. Not in, not in certain us. not in certain circles, and you know, like yeah, we were talking no, about. In all circles, I, I, well, we were talking about this last week. Uh, if you go to the Nation of Islam's uh, um, meetings, you often hear talk of nutrition and, okay, and, and, okay. and medicinal diet, you know, how, 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 well, and therapeutic diets and, and whatnot. So you do hear now, that. This there. is how the data breaks up, Brother Salim. Mm -hmm. From 0 to 14, black males are going to die from accidental deaths primarily. That's the highest rate. From 15 to 34, it's homicide. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to live past 34, you're either going to die. This is the this is the uh, the approximation. You're either going to die from heart disease or cancer. Right. Yes, That's sir. It. So it seems to me that we really need to uh, uh, construct our discussions more on diet than on homicide. That's a very good That's, point, my brother. It's ten times ten. You're ten times more likely to get uh, to to get killed by uh, cancer or heart disease than homicide. Yes, sir. Hey, Brother Salim, a uh, few more things, man. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Wells brought up the argument that people didn't write things down and they may have done it before. That's not how evidence works. <laughs> That's true. That's not how it, either you got evidence of sort or you shit or you sit down in the back of the class and you shut up. <laughs> now, Brother Salim, one last thing. I told Mr. Wells, and this is how I approach the world. Uh, I categorize everybody in the world based upon four categories, Brother Salim. If you know something and you know that you know it, you're wise. You follow me? If you know it, if you know something and you know that you know it, you're wise. You need to follow that person. That's the first category. That's the highest one. Let me give you the one at the bottom. If you don't know something and you don't know that you don't know it, you follow me? Mm-hmm. And there are two in the middle. For example, if you know something and you don't know that you know it, or if you don't know something and you think that you know it. So that's how I break up everybody in the world in those four categories, based upon whether they know something 
And if they know that they know it or if they don't know that they know, I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing. But well, you know, yeah, that, that, that's your categories. I, I, everyone has their idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic you know, kind of category. That's yours. I hear you. Brother Salim, uh-huh. on, last, on, on last show, I talked about the difference between believing and knowledge. Yes. To me, people acquire knowledge through experiences uh, uh, or observation or reading or someone else that has that knowledge that pass it on to you. See, Brother Salim, there's some things that we're unsure about, and that's where that belief comes in. Yes. And there's a lot of people in that belief category that follow these religions and all of that. And that's the problem. If you believe something, you're not actually sure that you know it or not. And, and, and as I said before, the last comment, Brother Salim. But sometimes you can't, sometimes knowledge is, is, is you know, it, it's incapable of, uh, you know, of quantifying. Sometimes knowledge is, is, is uh, unquantifiable, and that's where belief fills a void. Yeah, and, and, and brother, but, but belief does not give you any knowledge, Brother Salim. Well, yeah, but knowledge is not the only way of knowing, so to speak. <laughs> there, there's... Uh, uh, intellectual, you're talking about intellectual knowledge. There are other ways of knowing, and belief may be one of those ways. It, you know, it may be an, an emotional way of not, of knowing that is not can, a transfer you, you of data. Belief gives you some sort of knowledge, brother Salim. Well, uh, uh, you know, you may believe, you may have some belief in 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 the ultimate uh, um, beneficence of 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 rainfall and uh, something like that, dude. Because because since it's been since it's had um, uh, but you've, you know, it's you've, been, you see, Brother Salim, you've experienced it already, so that's why you know, you know, that's knowledge. Well, but Brother, you see, it's hard, to, it's hard as a human not to have experience because that, you know, all of our senses are a product of our experience, our perception. And that's where, the, that's where the knowledge comes from through your senses and experiencing. Yeah, but that's a, you're talking about an intellectual process. Uh, a, a lot of times, knowledge, uh, you know, knowledge is instinctual. Where, where do you where do you classify instinctual uh, awareness? Say, instinctual as what, brother Salim? Uh, instinctual as as uh, you you know, a bird, for example, a bird builds a nest, uh, and and they no one taught them. It's an no, instinct. No, they, 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 they were in the nest when their parents built it, brother Salim. Oh, okay, all right, yes, okay. sir. I'm out, I'm out, brother Salim. Thanks a lot for taking my call. All right, Shelby. Thank Have you, brother. Night, you too. You, all right, um, you, you, getting when you get to uh, to, to questions of um, of uh, on, ontological questions and, and entomological questions, you you, uh, you 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 get into some wispy stuff. Let's go back to the phones. Um, Steve, hey man. Hey, how you doing this evening? I'm good. I'm good. <coughs> Yeah, I was gonna um, comment on um, on Donald Trump. Um, how you talk about him threatening the post to get opposed on how they how they doing capitalism? But <clears throat> I want to touch on something else. Um, dealing with the like the climate and everything. Um, when you look at between like what's going on with the wars and that uh, contamination from the bombs and everything. And then you got the other contamination going on uh, as far as with these oil refineries and all this pollution. It's like um, there's no, it's like the, the natural filter that's, you know, the natural cycles is being destroyed. And, it, and, it's, and it's sort of like, you know, when I look at the, um, when you look at both, that's destroying the planet. It's like they got one thing in common, and that's old men. Whether they white, whether they, if we go to Asia, if we go to China, Japan, it's like the the, the, the people that's driving these policies, I mean, that's driving this thing that's destroying the planet, is old, man. You know, and... And I think, and I think, because like if you look at, let's say, things like you look at the the uh, the, um, the oil the, the, uh, in the the energy industry, it's not even a fight about it's not even a fight about like paying the workers or nothing like that. The fight is about get more uh, regulations, um, not you know, knocked down to do what to pollute more. I think these these people are. I think they don't want to leave this planet the way it is when they 
leave. I think they want to destroy it, for real. Because, I mean, the money, the, 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 the barrier of them not um, 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 paying people, so much, it's, not, it's like everything is more regulation. Um, when you pollute water, when you normally know you're going to pollute water that's going to destroy fish, that's going to uh, kill people. I mean... What what other what other what other conclusion can you come to? Money cannot just be it. I think it gotta be I think it gotta be I had I had my run. I done enjoy my what life has to offer on this planet and now I'm old and it's like it's like they bitter, man. I mean if you think about it, just just look at it. Like why? And, and it is like I was looking at this documentary, uh and they were talking about the fishes, and they were talking about these whales in Alaska, like thirty of them washed up on the shore. I mean, it's like it's obvious. They had a they had a very they had a very um, big what they call event cataclysmic event of whales dying in Alaska. Really, uh, right. Very very um, troubling development. All right. So you know when you look at all this, this this is destroying the planet and this contamination, all this going on. When you think about all. The policy has been driven, whether it's war, it's old, white, so, so it's, it's, some, it's some people, old people, that's driving these destructive policies, whether it's contaminating the planet or, or killing other folks. You know what they would, you know what people might say, Steve, is that you have to pay for this kind of civilization. There's a cost. There's a cost to turning on your light. And 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 clicking your 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 computer whenever you want to in your home. There's a cost to putting on the air conditioner whenever you get hot. There's a cost to all of this. We don't see it, but part of that cost is exactly what you're talking about: the despoiling of the environment. But we don't we don't see the connection uh, because we're prevented from seeing it. Um, because even as we um, benefit from this despoilation, uh, it's also profitable. Mhm. Yeah. So I, you know, I, um, I took that in consideration, but, I, but you know, from 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 uh, doing research and, and I'm saying when it's other alternatives, like they say, like the um, like the people that's doing the polluting, right? like these mm-hmm. factories, it's mm-hmm. the tech. They got the technology to, you know. Whether it's um, carbons and you know all of this stuff that's you know, like the president, you know, and, and people on the climate change part is pushing. It's technology to do to make this stuff uh, cleaner or whatever. Yes, it's sir. like it refusing to do it, and it's just kind of like why wow, you, you ain't paying taxes? <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of like why, why, why you, not? Do don't it? you know why? Because they, uh, they, they it, the current way is so profitable. They don't want to. They don't want to give that up. Uh, and they, and they have they have the uh, they have the means to produce p- propaganda and to hire people to to talk about the the uh, uselessness of clean energy or how solar energy will never be the equal of of, uh, of coal or, or whatever whatever they want to whatever argument they want to push they have the means to push it um, and, and because they have the you know they they're still making profits and they don't want to give those profits up. Some are, some of them of course are diversifying in the solar possibilities and other kind of uh, alternative energy wind for, farms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They they're more they're more positioned to 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 um to welcome that kind of argument. But but others man, you know, whenever you change paradigms, that old paradigm hangs on for dear life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was just um, um, yeah, that's what I was just saying. That, do, do you think that that uh, the bitterness is it more is it is, is the majority of it about money or is it more so? Well, hey, I had my run, so hey. <laughs> I don't. I, and some of that may be part of it, man. You know, uh, or, or at least people justify what they're doing, um, you know, by various deceptive ways. So yeah, it could be that as well. Thank you, man. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate right. it, brother. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, uh hey, uh it, it's profitable to, to be to be uh an environmental despoiler. It still is. It's becoming less profitable, but it still is uh profitable. Um 
what, what Mr. Wells was talking about, and I, I think the, the, the distinction that, that uh, Shelby and Wells were, Wells was talking about oral tradition, and that is a very strong sensibility in African societies, a very strong tradition in African societies. Orality is something that was very highly treasured. Uh, we often talk about the griots in, 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 um, in Mali. You know, griots were so important because uh, they, were, they were depended on as, as accurate reflectors of historical tradition. It wasn't written tradition. It was oral tradition, as, as uh, Mr. Wells points out. And that's true. There is quite a bit of that in, in, African, in, in African cultures, various African cultures. Uh, Shelby's also correct, though, that um, you know, a lot of that is, is, is subjective and culturally determined. And so it's hard to get any kind of objective assessment of what was the development of that period. That's why Kemet is so important, uh, because of uh, what, what people call the glyphs. They were not just in parchment, uh, but they were also written in stone on the temples, on the walls. Uh, and um, that, that is definite evidence that is irrefutable, not simply um, dependent on various cultural understandings that, that griots may, may um, promote, and another kind of oral uh, storytellers. So that th th those are, are true, and and you know, and, and as I was trying to say to to, to, to uh, Shelby, sometimes you know, what epistemology or the study of knowledge, it, it, you know, intellectual apprehension of knowledge is, is of data is is a form of knowledge, but there are other other ways of knowing that are not simply intellectual or rational um, or, or reason based linear knowledge. All right, back to the phones. Verna, good evening. How are you? Hey, Verna. Oh, hello, Ms. Lillian. I was thinking. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, I'm not going to talk about the big Don't, bad You have to apologize for thinking. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the big bad wolf. I'm going to talk about Farrakhan's speech. Yes, ma'am. I heard him from beginning to end Thursday night. Okay. He touched on a lot of subjects, same sex, adultery, incest, Mm. Talking about men raping children. And he not only said, not don't shop on Black Friday, he said also don't shop at Christmas time, too. Mm. So we're supposed to do both. All right. I know you heard the speech, didn't you? I heard parts of it, yes, ma'am. I didn't yeah, hear I the whole thing. It was a long speech. He mm. said he wasn't using notes, but he really covered a lot of information. And uh, I really enjoyed his speech. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, Celine. All right, Verna, thank you. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, Christmas too. Okay. Hey. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think that that's a logical step. Uh, we've often talked about it on, you know, VON. We, we talk about it frequently, um, using economic leverage uh, as, as a tool. Um, it's, one of, it's one of the tools in our toolbox, one of the arrows in our quiver. Uh, just like voting is an arrow, there are various arrows, and we need to use all of them. And certainly economic pressure, economic leverage is one that we haven't used sufficiently. Um, and one of the reasons is, that, is because it's, it's hard to get a, consens a consensus of opinion on whether to do it, how to do it, blah, blah, blah. But I think with this heightened sensibility in our community about police violence and anger, over these these repeated incidents of of, uh, of just simply disrespecting the lives of black people, I think the the black community is 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 ready to express itself in in, in a in a more um, forthright way. And, and uh, Minister Farrakhan may have simply captured the spirit of the times with this, and it, it can be effectively deployed as as a as a weapon as a one of the one of the tools in our toolbox. Um, and uh, that that just may be the case. All right, let's go to uh, Marvin. Hey, Marvin, back with you, my brother. Yes, uh, yes sir, I'm well, man. Hey, look at, uh, uh, I heard a little while ago, uh, Kirk Kelly had uh, Willie Wilson on, on his program today. 
Talking yeah. about his presidency? Yeah, that was during the week. This was a repeat broadcast. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Marvin, are you? Do you have your? Uh, uh, I got the phone on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just turn it off. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so what? So what he did was. So what Willie Wilson said was that the um, the people that that he's running the, that he was running against, I think Hillary Clinton and uh, uh, those and. and and Bernie Sanders and other three candidates, uh, they try to keep him from getting on that spot. They the, the uh, Democratic Party try to keep him from even getting on the ballot. Yeah, they didn't want him in there. And he said that no matter where he went, he went to he went to get on. He went to uh, some speech they made. They blocked him from getting there. They blocked him up, and uh, they, they told him he couldn't. He couldn't. They didn't know him because he his poll was low. But I believe I, I, what I believe is that. Uh, uh, they didn't want see when Obama announced him. Marvin, do you think do you think Willie Wilson is a, is a legitimate and and uh, um, creditable candidate for president? I think he is from what he said. From what from what he was from what he was talking about. Cliff Keller asked him some questions, and he had phone calls. Like one, of, I, I was one of the phone calls. Mm -hmm. What did you and, ask? Uh, he, what did you ask? Asked, I asked him about the uh, cities and stuff around the United States, and uh, was able to get along with the, with you know people in the legislature, like for example Cory Booker, uh, in the that that's that's the black the only black Democratic senator in the United in the United States. Uh, it's about about uh, about how he can quell cities and stuff. You know how he can get rid, how he can quell the violence from these cities. And I was talking also to him what about did he, what did he say. He said he, he he thought about it. He did. he said he uh he he liked the idea, but then I, then I talked about like the, the idea thing. what of quelling the violence. Of course, yeah, well, everybody likes that idea, too. right? Right. But what I was talking about the fact that he had a well back in 2008, the city of Newark had a, 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 a religious campaign where they had all these uh, evangelists uh, going around the cities. And and go around to different groups, calling the violence, calling the violence, getting people in prayer, praying for people down in uh, Newark back in 2008. It didn't work it, though. It worked. Uh, <laughs> it worked very much. They said it was it's, it's been very successful. Uh, I you know I don't, I don't know who's whose version but, uh, of the quit, story but, you 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 heard on that, but but uh, I heard it on I was at church and I heard it on the uh, videos uh, they was talking about that. I believe it because you know if you get in well, the prayer, if, you, if you look at the murder rate of Newark, it, it uh, 2008 wasn't one of the one of, wasn't one of its lowest years. No, that was before that all that happened. This, he didn't say what month it was, but he said it was just. I believe that was then almost at the end of uh, because the, I'm pretty the, familiar the with Newark, New Jersey. That's why I can I, you know I speak on on that uh, with a little bit of a, a, a surety. Um, no, I, 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 I don't. I don't think it. I don't. I don't think I had an appreciable. Maybe in certain neighborhoods it worked, just like those sisters in Inglewood, you know, who stop right. violence. I, if people, you know, put their minds to it, man, and it's a concerted effort, all kind of things can happen. So I don't. I don't doubt that. Yes, sir. I, I'm with. But that. like I was saying, Willie mm -hmm. Wilson was talking about. Uh, uh, I was telling him about this, his campaign when he did when he was running for mayor. I could tell. I told him he could use the uh, whatever he was talking about. On his mayor campaign, build it up on a national basis, because he because it sounded like he wanted to. He was very serious about what he's going to do, and he says he's not going to quit either. He says he's going to keep going with that, you know, with with campaigning. And I said, well, fine, we'll go ahead, you know. And everybody else had had gave him a, a, a vote of confidence too. You think so? Uh, so you think he, you think it's a you think it's it's a worthy campaign? I think it's worthy campaign, regardless right. whether he win or not. He's going to. Mm -hmm. He's going to see they they don't want another black person. I think to what I'm thinking, they don't want another black who, person. Who doesn't want? That. Who does? Who who? Uh, when well, like I said, when Barack the Democratic Party, mm. when Barack Obama announced him being president over Hillary Clinton, I believe that 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 forced a lot of people <laughs> kind of angry. A lot of people got kind of angry that Barack came in up in there. Yeah, but they gave, they elected him twice. Oh, they elected him twice, but what I'm saying is that uh, they they was all ready to get Hillary in there. A lot of the that's true, places. just like they are now. All mm -hmm. right, man. Thank you, Marvin. Appreciate it, brother. All right. But um, I wonder, do you do you guys think that uh, Willie Wilson is um uh, an appropriate candidate for president 
for black people? What do you think? Aya, good evening. How are you? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. I think a minute might have more, more than one. But, so, 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 do I think really Wilson is appropriate? I think he's a wonderful black man when he has knowledge of self to do for self, go for self, and be about self. But any white, any black person, in, a, in no, any black face in a white place is not the ultimate solution to African liberation. Do you understand that? Um, if you, I mean, I, I can, uh, that, that's your assertion. I, said, I, I hear you, huh? I hear you. No, no, hear me. I, I, with respect to you and Sister Payam, I want to have a just a dialogue with you. I am ad libbing. What does Payam mean? I don't understand that. Is Excuse it? me. I say Payam. What, what, is that an African uh, expression? No, Payam said that I didn't. Oh, 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 agree oh, oh. With you. oh, okay. You know, Sister so said she didn't agree with you that I was talking too much. I didn't dialogue with you. Well, you do, you, 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 do, you, you do tend to be a bit disrespectful in your, in your talk. And disrespectful? I, well, I just, you do tend to be, but I understand, I understand your limitations, my sister, so I let it go. Uh, uh, please, lim limitations. Go ahead. But, uh, the, the, no, I was going to answer yes, to say What were you going to say? Thank you. Uh, go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, I'm frustrated with all Negroes. I ain't going to point nobody out. But so, Brother Salim, I want to know, are you still high? That's hopeless <laughs> integrationist, or are we <laughs> as wise as the serpent and humble as a dove? And as is as in African spiritual solidarity. You get that? So I'm just saying, when y'all going to be in my kingdom for me as a black woman? Uh, now, uh, about the 10, 10, 15. Y'all there in uh, Chicago, please tell the dear honorable minister that I'm not satisfied about my ticket and everything, but I want the fact that there should be a special, immediate conference between the Negroes, the heroes, and the so on going to be sure. I'm talking about the NAACP, the UNIA, the uh, Nation of Islam. Go to, mm. go to Washington with Dr. King's last speech of his check. Without in, in, the, in the promised land, we can't accept that check without understanding the promised land. I ain't trying to eat bean pies every day. <laughs> hear me, hear me mm. well, okay? I'm talking about United International Negroes of, uh, of uh, pro Africanism and pro Blackism in this country. Give us a country. Give us a give us a, a corner of a, a section of this country, Mississippi, Alabama, who, Mississippi, who, who whatever. Do want, who do you but, want to give us that? Who do I want to give us up? Uh -huh. Who we pay for? Who work for? Who we work for for four hundred years? Who, the United who, who States of this America. Okay. The United States of this America. I'm saying, make it clear. I ain't paying another pen, red penny for land. I don't want to go to talk about no, no economic. Uh, what you call it? Boycott. That's All one right. avenue, avenue. But oh. the voting is another. It's yes, only for what? You ain't talking about the emancipation of uh, revitalization of land in this country. Got Dr. You. King say the promise. Uh, Got you, my sister. Thank you. Appreciate it, Aya. Let's go to Madeline. Madeline, good evening. How are you? Oh, I'm good, Salim. Huh? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, yes. Uh, you got to me a little bit faster than what I thought you would, <laughs> okay. but that's okay. That's good. I got a couple of things that I would like to talk about, Salim. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I did put, uh, I posted uh, some information about Minister Farrakhan. Yes, ma'am. I saw um, that. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, thank you for and that. I, and when, and I'm waiting for that video. The Milwaukee. The video that was the that. Milwaukee uh, speech, right? No, no. Uh, this was in Memphis, Tennessee, this week. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, and uh, and like Werner, I listened to the entire speech also. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and as as in typical Farrakhan style, he covered many topics, mm -hmm. uh, all of which were. Uh, right on point. Um, one thing that, that uh, and, I, and I'm glad that he brought that up about doing the boycott, uh, because uh, we need, we really need to do, uh, redirect our money. But um, I'm waiting for the video of that uh, speech, like I said, to come out because I would, I want to be able to post that for so people really understand the context that he was talking about uh, with that, because. Of course, he went into a great length talking about 
uh, the purpose of Christmas, which is not about buying gifts and spending a lot of money, mm-hmm. which black folks tend to do mm-hmm. even more so than anybody else. Absolutely. Um, and um, I, in fact, I like the, what one caller earlier mentioned about opening the savings account. I would suggest uh, that. Brother Kevin. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would suggest that for people who can do it, who follow the stock market, that uh, they could even take a page from what John Rogers' father used to do for him. Buy your kids some, some stock. stock. Mm. Or yeah, buy a mutual fund. If you're, not, if you're not real comfortable with buying stock, and some people may not be in, uh, to buy the individual stock, you can even buy into a mutual fund. Now, of course, you got to do some research on that stuff so you understand what you're but doing. I, but I think you. that that would that would um, that that would go a bit counter to the intentions of what Kevin was talking about, and that is to uh, to to uh, enhance the financial um, health of of black financial institutions, black banks, and other kinds of, of uh, institutions. Uh, by but you know, if you provide your child with that kind of uh, that kind of account. Oh, yes, I understood what he was saying as mm-hmm. far as opening, a, uh, you know, an account at a black bank. I, right. I certainly understand it. The only reason I mentioned the stock or possibly into a mutual fund is because we know that's where really uh, financial capacity can be achieved. Correct. Um, because, I mean, that's the, the people who represent that 1% of America, <laughs> you right. and I know, they've made a killing over the last. Uh, seven years. That's right. Although they had a, they had a slight correction this week, right? Of course, Man. of course, they did. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. But you know, I mean, that's the way of the market. Yes, right. Celine, that's right. As a matter of fact, I learned about how to read uh, uh, the um, how to deal with the stock market back when I was a, uh, a teenager. I was like about eighteen, nineteen years old because I happened to get a job with an inheritance tax appraiser, mm. and I and I had to study. Um, uh, you know, NASDAQ and American wow. Stock Exchange and all oh, you that. You were very stuff. lucky. You were very lucky. I was very mm-hmm. lucky. That was one of the best experiences that Absolutely. I had. Absolutely. So anyway, moving right along, I like the, um, the other thing that he talked about, which really um, resonated very well with me, was um, M- Madeline, his, his uh, look, Madeline, about... Madeline, we're we coming to the top of the hour. You know, w- w- why don't I hold you over and we can, uh, dis- the, you know, the, uh, continue this discussion on the other side. I would side. appreciate that. All right. We'll be back right after this. The Talk of Chicago is 1690 WVON, Berwyn, <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Cheering U.S. heroes, fighting the West wildfires. I'm Ann Cates. France is applauding the three Americans and the British businessmen who helped prevent a terrorist attack on a Paris-bound train. Correspondent Nick Robertson reports on the reaction when two of them left the hospital. There were French people standing at the side of the road, and when they saw these two young Americans driving out, they cheered at the side of the road. These men, these young Americans, really are heroes to the French. There were so many French people on that train, so many lives saved by their quick actions. Hundreds of firefighters are still battling dozens of major blazes in the West. Carol Conley of the Northwest Interagency Coordination Center says the weather isn't helping. We do have uh, significant drought counties that were declared in both Oregon and Washington. Um, That's part of our issue here is it's been warm, hot, dry. Resources are so strained that fire officials are training volunteers to help professional firefighters battle the blazes. I'm Ann Cates. A violent storm system is causing problems at an NFL preseason game in Minneapolis. Correspondent Gary Cohn with details. Anxious moments in Minneapolis. A severe storm system moving through the area has caused an evacuation of TCF Bank Stadium. That is where the Minnesota Vikings are hosting the Oakland Raiders. That game is being delayed. The storm system is moving through. But lightning in the area caused the stadium area to be evacuated with fans being sent to shelter. As the summer driving season winds down, motorists are getting a price break at the pump. According to GasBuddy.com, the average price of gasoline nationally is two sixty one a gallon. That is down more than eighty cents compared to this time last year. Oil analysts say most of the country can expect prices to continue dropping through the fall as demand eases and refineries take care of maintenance issues and switch to cheaper winter grades of fuel. Five hundred filling stations are selling gas for less than two dollars a gallon. I'm Ann Cates. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I'm no good at math. 
I hate math. <sighs> I've always considered myself a good mother, but when it came to my son Billy's math, I was at a loss. It wasn't that he didn't try, but he kept falling further behind and losing confidence. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. You can order any subject from arithmetic to fractions, percents, algebra, even calculus. Concepts are simplified in an entertaining way, so students enjoy learning at their own pace in the convenience of home. It's as easy as watching TV. Best of all, it's affordable for everyone. Listen, in the frustration. Call Math Made Easy. Call now for a 30-day risk-free trial. 866-598-MATH. Most students forget at least 50% of the year's schoolwork over the summer. And with Math Made Easy, your child will be prepared to excel in math this coming fall. Call now, 866-598-6284, or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. A new study claims giving birth at home is just as safe as going to the hospital and saves parents thousands of dollars. Correspondent Michael Toscano reports. A new study finds that women who give birth at home with a midwife save on average $1,800 over the first 28 days. The savings come from emergency transport costs, pharmaceuticals, and hospital charges. All cases in the study were considered low-risk births, however. A 2012 report from the CDC suggests the lower costs are due to home births being less likely to involve premature delivery. This latest study is published in the journal PLOS, that's P-L-O-S, 1. I'm Michael Toscano. There are happy panda fans in the nation's capital. The National Zoo in Washington says May Shong, its female giant panda, has given birth this afternoon to a cub after going into labor earlier today. May Shong's first cub was born in 2005. Her second cub, Bao Bao, turns two tomorrow. I'm Ann Cates. Did you know that there's a free app that turns your mobile device into a personal radio station? With RDO, that's R-D-I-O, listen to this station live, wherever you are. Your favorite artists and your favorite songs, with a whole new way to listen. Plus, RDO has countless free stations powered by millions of songs. Go to RDO.com slash live, and instantly, you've got your songs right where you want them. That's RDO. Music tuned to you. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Up late at night, can't sleep? Well, you might as well stay up all night. With Insane Wayne and the B-Sides. From midnight until 3 a.m., it's all of your favorite Dusties from back in the day. Hey, boo-boo. With Insane Wayne, weeknights from midnight until 3. And it looks like day. On 1690 WVON, the talk of Chicago. Now you can sleep tomorrow. Won't catch me up again. Hello, I'm Sir Henry Cheatham inviting you, Mary, Margaret, Elizabeth, Sally, Felicia, and Sue, along with Makita, Lakeisha, and all of the senoritas, too, to our Saturday night juke joint, Classic Blues and R&B, here on AM 1690 WVON. And don't forget to bring Byron, Henry, Leroy, Juan, Delmar, and Ray Ray, too. Join us here every Saturday night at 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the Talk of Chicago and the Voice of the Nation, AM 1690 WVON. From the Xfinity Studios at WVON. We're your original social media. Hashtag Celine Milwaukee on 1690, the talk of Chicago.
907. Salim Muwakil here on the Talk of Chicago on August 22nd. Our number is 591-1690. Give us a call if you uh, like to get in on this. Let's go right back to Madeline. Good evening. Uh, continue your point, Madeline. Yes, yes, Salim. Thank you for um, uh, continuing this dialogue. Mm -hmm. or not, oh, I should say allowing me to continue this dialogue. By the way, Salim, I must tell you one of the other reasons, in addition to the opportunity to hear and participate in these intellectual discourses, I really love your music. Oh, thank you. I appreciate I am a that. jazz buff to the core. All right, all right. Yes, ma'am. Got That's introduced the music. to it. It sounds like you've been listening to it also for a long, long, long time. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so yes, what I was going to say to him was um, um, uh, the context that um, uh, that the minister was talking about with all the various issues, and I, and I like, I mean, the things that he said, for example, about the, the whole issue of homosexuality and how that's been a part of the social engineering of the black family. Mm. And, uh, look, and I'll just tell you this uh, with just a, a bit of context added to this. My son, I have only one child, and I put the word son in quotes because he announced to me four years ago that he wanted to be a woman. Mm. And wow. so that for me was devastating. I must say, but at the same time, did you have done, Did you have any indication of it during during his life? Uh, I can tell you when he was growing up, none, hmm. zero, all male. Now I was a single parent. He had really no relationship with his father. Mm -hmm. His father just didn't bond with him. And in fact, what I what I tried to do to offset that was making sure that I had. Uh, that I gave him lots and lots of opportunities to have relationships with men in different situations, mm -hmm. um, different types, because I gave him lots and lots of uh, experiences uh, during his growing up years. So what I found out was during his first marriage, he started cross-dressing. And when I went and within mm -hmm. uh, in that experience, when I talked to him about it, he said that for him, it was a way to relieve stress. Well, of course, I, I said then you had crossed that line because mm -hmm. I know real men do not do that. Mm -hmm. And so I encouraged him to actually seek out therapy. Well, he didn't do that. He didn't want to do it. And he just continued through the other marriages. He's now, in fact, into marriage number four. Mm -hmm. um, he has not done the sexual reassignment. How, how old is he? He's 46 years old as mm -hmm. of last December. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. and I can tell you this, Celine. I have studied this stuff and about the whole LGBT phenomenon because um, I wanted to know really the origins, where, where what started it, and mm -hmm. how it has evolved over the years. Because I used to live on the West Coast in Bay Area, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and so I saw things going on back in the '70s. Mm -hmm. And I, I do know when the minister talked about the social engineering of the black family structure and how homosexuality has played into that. I know exactly what he's talking about because historically this, uh, this stuff actually goes back as far as the 1950s in terms of policies that were in, put in place to depopulate the black population worldwide. And homosexuality was, looked, uh, was deemed to be a context by which that could happen. Mm, interesting. All right, Mal Madeline. Okay, I wanted Appreciate to say one more thing. You asked about uh, Willie Wilson. Mm. Um, Willie Wilson, I think his candidacy would be really great for the black community because he's going to bring up issues that nobody else would bring up. All right, I got you. Thank you, my, my sister. I appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. It. All Please. right, bye-bye. All right. Let's go to and uh, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Good evening. How are you, sir? Hello, brother Salim. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. All right. It's good to hear your voice, my yes, brother, sir. and yours as well. Thank you. I wish to uh, bring up a couple of uh, points, if I may. Sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't a couple of your previous callers talking about the environment and um, the poisoning and the toxicity yes. of the environment, yeah, things yeah. along that nature? Indeed. Uh huh. I was going to suggest, and I have. I have spoken on this subject before with the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and I was about to say that in my personal opinion, I feel that 
One thing, uh, one alternative fuel that could be utilized in this country, if not around the world, would be ethanol, ethanol alcohol. And the reason why I say that is because, as I understand it, if there's if there's anybody in the listening audience who um, has a higher knowledge, you know, concerning this subject, please, you know, call in and, and refute me. But as I understand it, ethanol alcohol can be made from anything that'll biodegrade. A lot of people feel it can only be uh, made from corn. It can be made from corn, but it can be made from corn, grass, weeds, sugar cane, uh, things of that nature. And I feel that. Uh, since the byproduct, as I understand it, from the burning of ethanol is carbon dioxide, as I understand it, carbon dioxide is used by plants to feed off of. And since it can be made from anything that will decompose, that would be healthy for the environment. That's, that's number one, I wanted to say. And we could get away from using uh, fossil fuels, you know, gasoline, which is derived from oil. Yes, and that sir. would help. The to only problem, I, I, you know, there there are various plants that people, as you point out, that that you that are efficient for for manufacturing ethanol. Alfalfa is one, for example, and and um, but but the problem though that that people point to is that it requires as much energy to um, to extract uh, the the fuel from from those plants, uh, 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 you know, that will make it. It makes it less efficient because you you require as much to extract the fuel to extract it. Well, it's like, well, it's like this: the country of Brazil uh, run run their cars and small pickup trucks off of pure ethanol, and you know where they get it from? Sugarcane. Sh- thank you, sugarcane. Now, the, now the United States of America, geographically speaking, I think is is physically bigger than the country of Brazil were more technologically advanced. So I feel we could definitely do the same thing. We could just simply do it on a larger scale. And keep in mind, ethanol can be made from anything, not just corn. It can be made from any type of plant-based product. It can be made from grass clippings, weed clippings, uh, downed trees, uh, well, anything. Not, not exactly. But, yes, uh, I, I hear your point. And it can also and, be, and made, it is, it can also it be is. made from animal manure, too. Um, it, it can be, although that that requires a bit more uh, of a processing. But but yeah, I mean, th- those 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 um, alternatives are being explored, man. Um, oh. No doubt about it. And finally, uh, I wanted to ask your opinion about something. <clears throat> a few a uh, few callers back, somebody was speaking about the women who had become army rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to ask your opinion about something. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you're a former military man yourself, aren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, in your opinion, as a former military man yourself, which uh, is more physically demanding, being an army ranger or becoming a Navy SEAL? Oh, <laughs> Um, both both of them, I, I, I think they they replicate each other. Um, Army Rangers, of of course, were first, and I think Navy SEALs they have other they have other uh, requirements. I, I think m- m- much more um, a maritime focus. And because uh, I was of the impression that uh, that the uh, physical requirements for becoming a Navy SEAL was even much more demanding than that of becoming an Army Ranger. Mm, well, I mean, it all depends. I mean, like I say, they have they have some specified requirements for maritime, uh, um, you know, specialties. Just as the Air Force, Air, Air Commandos, are another branch of those special forces folk. Air Commandos have a have um, added ha- have added um, requirements in terms of uh, jumping. You know their their jump status ha- is more is more stringent than than Army Rangers and uh, SEALs. But I think the SEALs have more uh, aquatic um, requirements. So going uh, through know, the water, in other words, exactly. Because you know I remember not so long ago, a few years ago, there was a controversy started about. Um, whether or not, uh, how can I phrase this? I'll make it quick because I know you have other callers, but as best as I can uh, articulate this, some members of the United States military were complaining about the fact that um, the standards for women to get into the military were lowered because they were saying that women, by and large, overall, could not do as many push-ups, sit-ups, and chin-ups and run the mile in under, say, 40 minutes the way most men 
uh, could do it. And I heard some people say, now this is what I saw on television, I believe it was on 60 Minutes or Dateline or something of that nature, where uh, somebody had raised the argument. They said, it, you know, if you're going to lower the requirements for women to get into the military, it's not fair to those men who had to meet those high standards in order to become, uh, say, and, a and, and Beret. I, and I think, and I or think that argument, or I, a Navy I think that argument won out, uh, my brother, because uh, they have not lowered the requirements at all. Well, because I, 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 that's what I, that's what they reported in this special, you know, segment. And I was saying to myself, if that's true, and I'm in no position it, it, to say that it is or isn't, it, but not, if it, it was, it's true, not true. It's not true because they, they, they did have a lot of controversy about those particular programs. But only, it's, it's true. For, it's only not true for, for these special forces, like like the Rangers or the SEALs or the Air Commandos. It is true uh, for the general enlisted population. Oh, there so have been the general changes. enlisted population. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one final question. Do you think that there will ever be a day when they'll have female Navy SEALs? Well, they have female rangers, man, and according to the according to their um, their teammates, they they performed uh, excellently. So uh, who knows? I never thought we'd see women who can play basketball like I see them play. Oh, uh, hey, this I, I remember uh, women being uh, great basketball players back during the nineteen seventies. Well, I, so that, I, that, that yeah, but see that me. that may that may be long ago for you, but for me, that's still rel relatively recent. And and I'm still surprised by that. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, Andrew. Have a good night. You too. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I never thought I'd see women dunk, for example, or, or or even execute some of the maneuvers that I see these women do on, on the basketball court. So I, I think that our notions of what is physically possible is really culturally determined to a great extent. Of course, there are limitations. There are definite differences in upper body strength between women and men. There's no getting around that. That's why um, I was rather skeptical that women could perform on, on a par with men in these ranger, um, you know, uh, um, <laughs> and, and the fact that, that uh, you know, these requirements to become a ranger and the requirements to become a, a Navy SEAL, um, if they were going to be as stringent as they are, I didn't think that women would, would uh, stand a chance, really, uh, of, uh, of succeeding. But, hey, according to, uh, according to all reports, these women succeeded. Let's go back to the phones. James, good evening. How are you, my brother? Brother, I'm slow, but I'm show. Yes, you are show. Yeah, I know I'm show. Uh, yes, brother, what happened to Brother Rand Fest? Um, uh, he's still around, you know, I, I, I see him every now and then. He's, he's doing a lot of other things though, you know, he's involved in a lot of differing, um, projects, uh, Donda's house and as well as other things, he's doing some videos. Um, he's getting involved with some, some hip hop folks who are, who are going beyond the music. So he's doing a lot of stuff. Okay. He's just not on the station. Anymore. No, no, he's not on the station anymore. Right. Okay, on the women uh, rangers, uh, the system is masculating women, and it hasn't just started. It's all part of their master plan of turning things upside down, and women fail for it. Hey, have you heard the latest joke going around? What's that? Body cams for a racist psychopath. That'll stop him. <laughs> hey, there, let me say this. Uh, the, the undercover racist, Bell Curve Steve, uh, last week he said we are more likely to be killed by one of well, our why, why do you say? Why do you say that, though, James? I, I'm, I'm curious, man. Just Is it just because of his tone of voice? Because I don't, I don't ever hear him saying anything that conforms to, to the bell curve theory that you, that you are talking about. Oh, well, you know, I can spot a racist on the moon. Okay. All so right. I can just, the way he talk and how he trying to trick our people by some of the things he says. So it is the with tone. his knowledge. So you know it, what I'm saying? With his knowledge, I know some of the things he say he's trying to fool our people. And he never well, can, can you uh, ne Can you, can you, uh, can you uh, pinpoint any particular thing or just your, your sense or your feeling? I mean, just since I've been in, I mean, he never come in on these, these uh, racist white supremacists 
and what his I think he, I think he comments frequently. Doing. I think he comments frequently on that. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't heard it. But okay. anyway, mm-hmm. he gonna say, uh, you know, we more likely to be killed by one of our own. What kind of decent human would say that with all we've been going through since the inception of police? We've been murdered, lynched, killed by police. Letting uh, people come in jail. I don't know. I don't out. know the exact context of of, of that, but uh, as as a brother pointed out, I think Wells or, or someone pointed out that between fifteen and thirty four years of age, we are homicide is the leading cause of death for black men. Well, yeah, but and, and and getting to that, we don't know who's killing a lot of these uh, black men. Uh, Zimmerman and uh, 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 Darren Wilson, they could be going around doing this killing. Okay. Uh, these racist hit squad, uh, very few people are being caught when blacks are being gunned down. So how do we know who's killing them? Okay. But it just, it just bothers me that a person supposed to be so intelligent and so caring and, and listen to I think you just I think it's just his tone that gets you, man. No, it ain't no tone. But it just it, I just can't see a person who's that intelligent and so caring can make a comment that we are more likely to be killed by one of our I, own. Now, like I say, I don't I don't I don't know police. the I don't know the context that he said that you know, in. But, but I'm telling you, hey, any race is more likely to be killed by uh, their own race. I mean, you know, what, what are you saying? That that's true. Nothing, that, that is true. That ain't got nothing to do with them shooting down an unarmed. That's why I say. That's why I'm saying. I, I like them to hear the context. Did you know yeah. the context he said it, or uh, or you, or do you remember? No, no, I don't remember the context. But he was talking. It don't even about, matter to you. You just you just didn't like what he said, so you don't. Well, even, I can I can pick up on this undercover racism. Oh, okay, I got and you. Trying bro. to fool some of our people. And uh, he do fool some of them. Now, I got to get that racist death. Okay. He do, he do fool some of them. Right. Now, let me close. He don't fool you, me. though, though, right? Oh, man, he couldn't fool me if it was 20 Steve. All right, brother. I know racism if it's on the moon. I can uh, Minister Farrakhan, with all due respect to the minister, he's grasping for straws. <laughs> These psychopaths are not concerned about no money. At this stage mm. of our extermination, I said that before. What yeah, you said it, but you don't. But, but, but just saying it don't don't. You know that's. You know I I appreciate you saying it, man. But I, I like you know. Th- well, how do you quantify what you're saying? You're just because, saying it because our time is up. They are in the process of now. I know, but you're just saying that up. too. I, I don't. I don't. You know. I, I don't. But that's that's my feeling, brother. Okay. That's my feeling, brother. Okay, go ahead. I can't go and prove to you that this we're in an extermination process. Okay. Now I told you before, we already in the genocide process since we was enslaved. Yes, sir. That genocide will graduate into extermination. Okay. Now I don't see no people. I said they're going to exterminate us. Now, I don't see no people. Who, who have plans to exterminate us, worrying about making some money off us. So I think Minister Far- uh, Farrakhan is way off base on this. Mm. I would like for him to appeal to the world, try to get some kind of human rights watch over us here before this extermination takes place. You mean? What do you mean? Like, uh, are you talking about like uh, deploying troops on the borders or in the cities to make sure that white the white people don't don't uh, enact ex- uh, genocidal plans? Is that what you mean? Well, I don't think the uh, white boy here gonna go for no troops in the city, but we could have some watchers. And more important than that, we, you know, we just need to let the world know that we are concerned here for our safety and that this thing can explode, and we will be exterminated. Now, our people are not really paying attention to this media, these helicopters, and what they are doing. This stuff is being set up to go down. James, There's James, so come on, James. Just, all stuff. you got to do, brother, is just release, just let it down for a little while, man, and you, your life, I think, would really bloom. And uh, But I appreciate I hear what you're saying. Hey, man. hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yes, sir. Go, with this. Go, right, go, go, ahead, go ahead, man. I hear one person, I listen to talk shows on different parts of the country. Mm-hmm. I hear one person telling us to be aware of extermination. Who's that? Now, can we put up with one black person Who is being that? concerned Is that you? about extermination? Just you? That's right. All 
All right. You may be right, okay, brother. We put up with that one I, person. I appreciate it, man. I, quite frankly, okay, you thank the, you, you one of the thank most. You, I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, Jane. Thank you. Uh, like like uh, often point out, man, whenever I'm, I'm, I run into folks, um, many of them say, hey, James, James. James is a very popular um, caller on, on this show. So a lot of people, I think, um, at least harbor suspicions that James may just be right, that these folks are planning to exterminate us and uh, we, you know, we got to get more serious about how we are looking at uh, our existence in this country. So I, I don't think people reject uh, uh, Brother James all, all the time, although, you know, it's, it's hard to, to be uh, so deeply pessimistic and, and fatalistic, quite frankly. Daryl, good evening. How are you? Hey, Selene, pretty good. How about yourself? Not bad, brother, not bad. Good, good. Hey, it's always a, a pleasure. I can't wait to, to get on your show or call your show and listen to your show and just every Wednesday and every Saturday. Thank you, man. Um, Appreciate that. Great brother. program. Um, a couple, and, and, and going back to James quickly, I understand where James is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say I, I uh, take the same context as he does, but uh, when the minister was speaking, I think, in my opinion, I think uh, I won't say he was grasping for straws, but I will say I think he missed a, a great uh, opportunity to to get since he's going to use this moment to gather everybody's attention. Uh, the hard part of putting a plan together is the actual hard part is getting the attention of all the people, the unity. Once you do that, then you, you can give any message. And I think what what I'm saying is instead of just boycotting, if he can grab everybody's attention then he needs to, we need, it needs to be a bigger message and maybe possibly rebuilding our community and how do we build, uh, just giving the money, then what, the day after, I just kind of feel like, you know, it's going to go back to what it was after a 30-day boycott. But if you have, if you can grasp the world's attention, our people's attention, then the message has to be bigger than that. Um, and well, let, let me, let me just, just offer, a, um, uh, let, let, let me do a little pushback on that. Okay. Um, maybe, the, you know, what the minister did in the first Million Man March was uh, essentially that. Go back to your communities, rebuild them. Go back. Uh, the, uh, a kind of a vague message, quite right. frankly. But, but, uh, but, a, but a general um, uh, aspirational message, you know, go back and, and, and become new people, blah, blah, blah. And, and that was too vague, I think perhaps uh, the minister may have concluded, and now he wants to be a bit more specific and a and, and, uh, smaller scale so that it, it doesn't, you know, so pe people are not uh, um, swamped with, a with certain kinds of expectations. Right. And this man is so brilliant. Oh, my God, this man is so brilliant. I just feel like he should, uh, maybe he should try to reach out to the, uh, the trouble of the youth. I mean, his speech that he gave, was, you know, like talking to your boys, you know, uh, <laughs> the way he came out and just related to you. He was very relatable mm -hmm. to the point that I think he can reach teenagers better than most of these parents can, uh, the way he can tell a story and I make people right, understand. Brother. I think you're right. Yeah, and, and I just wish he would go that route also. But I want to I wanna say also in, 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 in uh, terms of politics, I think uh, what a lot of people just don't understand is that uh, it's a new day. And people are tired of listening to the Bill Clintons who came out with the, you know, the smooth talker, relatable type guy getting into all the circles and everybody mm -hmm. loved him. I think people, that was a long time ago. Now the whole shock thing is worn off. Uh, people are desensitized. People, that whole thing that Hillary Clinton is trying to, she's trying to go off of Bill's uh, platform which is outdated. People have changed. People are not like that anymore. People want to hear the truth, the way the world is. People are, we no longer want to hear, uh, the, what's going to make, you know, what we want to, what, what soothes us. We want to hear the truth. And mm. I think, uh, you see all the, all these GOP candidates who are now trying to conform their personalities and their style to counter Trump, uh, because they see that people at this point are really, really fed up. And we were tired of hearing uh, the happy story, the sugar-coated story, and we want to hear it the way it is. Uh, we disagree with Trump in a lot of ways, but he's telling the truth in a lot of ways. And I think, in my opinion, at this point, uh, we have to be careful and watch out because I think there's going to be somebody sneaking up from the rear. Mm. 
<laughs> All right, brother Dow. All right. Hey, I hear you, man. Hey, thank you. you the man. Appreciate it, brother. Thank All you. Right, bro. Um, yeah, you know, um <clears throat> I I I hear uh, uh brother Darrell about uh, Minister Farrakhan's uh a call to you know maybe expanding it a bit, but uh, you know I, I think maybe um, uh, in, there are different ways of of looking at it, uh, and I'm sure that you have your your particular way. Um, but uh, Shelby um, Shelby's point I think is is a is a pretty resonant point, and it and it really brings up something that uh, we were talking about. Our, uh, Dr. Terry Mason was on the show um, Wednesday. And he's talking about uh, something that's happening at Trinity tomorrow. I think is is going on it, this this movie, plant based diet about plant based diets, um, and we were talking about how the, uh, the nation of Islam, you know, and 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 the Eat to Live when Eat to Live was uh, was first published. A lot of it was during the you know the, the Black Power era, and a lot of people was you know, pretty curious of why why a book about eating? Why why is that important for, for the revolution? For the, you know, we we wanna we we wanna go in on the white man. We don't you know, we wanna talk about diet. But as Shelby pointed out, um cancer and heart disease are the are the major killers of our people. Um and most and most of our ages. And uh, so diet is one of the most ex- important aspects of our existence in this country, something that we often simply neglect, ignore, or deny the importance of. And uh, it, was, it was, I think, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, quite frankly, who focused our minds back on how important this, this issue of, of, uh, of uh, eating was for us as a people. And that's an important um, contribution to that, that often is overlooked. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Leon, good evening. How are you, sir? All right. How you doing, sir? Doing good, my brother. Real good. I, I got a couple of uh, quick points I want to make. Okay. And, um, and I, I really need some help with this because I'm struggling with this. The first point is uh, concerning uh, whites and how it's such a small percentage that when the other whites, like, the ones that are doing horrible things around the planet. And with the uh, GMOs and all of that, mm-hmm. it's only a small percentage of the other whites, I, I, I guess I'll classify them as being good, that try to either stop these their counterparts or try to halt them from doing what, they're, what they continue to do, which is destroying the earth. So it seems... It seems like it's such a small percentage. I was going to say maybe like 60, 40, no, it would have to be maybe 80, 20, no, 90, no, 99 <laughs> and 1%. Yes. Yeah. So now, my other point. To me, it just seems like, and that's what I need some help with. It seems like we're acting kind of like slaves with this uh, Farrakhan thing. It's, I understand the whole concept of boycotting and all of that. That's fine. We can do that. But instead of turning this around and using it as a vehicle to promote black businesses or whatever we boycott, let's have a platform. Okay, well, these businesses we're going to support. So instead of just saying we, we, we're we not going to buy anything on this particular day, we should have an alternative of black businesses. So that, that seems to be omitted. Well, may, maybe that's to come. You know, I think that all of these are preliminary issues that are being raised. The, the actual event is not until the 10th of October. Um, maybe you know there's some there, there there's a lot of uh, com- compilation going on uh, where people are gathering data on on the various businesses that will be focused on you know that yeah, may well, be happening I, I, right I, now. I hope, yeah, and I hope so. And that would be that, that's one good thing that can come out of this. But does it have to be so? I mean, why do we have to go back ten ten? I mean, we we did that. And we're in either the same position or we're worse off. To me, it seems like we're worse off. And we, we you just mean, want you, to wor- wor- worse off than uh, after the Million Man March? Yeah, okay. because look, it's, now everybody else with other races and other groups, when they decide to do something, they just do it. 
Why because, do we have to go? Uh, uh, other groups have not been experienced to the same historical forces that we have been, brother. We we are yeah, unique. That's, we that's are absolutely true. unique people, uh, and so uh, we don't have the same kind of cultural imp the, the, the imperatives that others do, or the cultural capital that others do. We were prevented from accumulating that kind of cultural capital. So yeah. you know, there are a lot of things that they do uh, that we simply don't do because we don't have that historical experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 true too. But we do need to incorporate that in our behavior in the future. I Instead of being so reactive, why don't we just say, okay, look, we're not. We're going to police our own communities to make sure our people don't get out and we don't have these problems. We're going to open up our own grocery stores and our own schools instead of begging. That, that really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, brother? Why do you think oh. we haven't done it? You know, well, we understand these past decades of why we couldn't do it, but now we're in a position that we should be able to do something. And, we we, and indeed, we should be able to. Why do you think we haven't been able to? I think we're so busy, we're still caught up in this slave mentality. That's what I think. Well, we it, that, that's another way of saying that we don't have the cultural capital that others do. Uh, people, people like, for example, from different cultures like China or, or Korea, they have centuries of experience honing their personal interactions as independent people who have learned how to operate according to their own autonomous desires. We as a people have never been able to operate that way. We couldn't even, we couldn't even construct our uh, culture in a way that benefited us because we were too concerned with deflecting white supremacy. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult struggle, brother, that we have to go through. And, and I think that um, Minister Farrakhan is trying to make these kind of uh, rudimentary steps to help us build that kind of cultural capital that we need. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Wayne. All right, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, that question. Very good, man. Um, let's go to uh, D. Hey, D. How you doing? Oh, good evening, Brother Salim. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Well, I, I want to talk to you about uh, a, couple, a little bit about everything if I have the time. Well, we don't. But, have, uh, we, uh, in fact, we are getting kind of short, man, because there's a lot of people on, and we only have a little bit of time left. Oh, okay. Well, I I make it. Uh, I'll be more specific. Then. Okay. My first issue is to call people, call the uh, governor's office, and tell them we need a state budget. We mm, need uh, you real. know another revenue source. Absolutely. Also, I want to ask people to call their. Uh, the alderman, you know, we're trying to get an ordinance passed about keeping a promise so the city council can oversee the funds for CHA funding. Mm -hmm. So we can try to alleviate the permanent underclass we have in the city of Chicago. I mean, that's $330 million in federal funds for housing, but yet the city council has no oversight over this money. The city can do whatever they want. Why, to why, why is CHA hoarding, hoarding that money, man? What are, what are their plans? Well, you know... I understand, you know, um, CHA is deregulated, mm -hmm. so uh, they pretty much can do what they feel, you know, what they want. They can do what they want to do with this money. So, you know, there are a couple of groups out here trying to uh, get access uh, to those funds by way of the city council. And uh, so I was just, I was just dumbfounded that the city council had no control over this money. Mm. No. Um, Wow. Whatsoever, and my other uh, thing is also contact your alderman about. Uh, we need another source of revenue for the Chicago Public Schools. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I know Alderman Scott Walker Stack and his coalition. They're talking about a commuter tax or a transaction tax. Well, well financial so, transaction tax. How, I, I, that to me um, is going to be the. It seems like the, the going to be the clarion call, man. Okay. I mean, you know, it seems like we're going that way, and I think the mayor's talking about his budget. You know, he's talking about he's going to freeze up some uh, TIF funds, whatever that's supposed to be. But uh, also to, to piggyback on this um, promise ordinance about the Chicago housing uh, ordinance, we do have mm -hmm. 23 aldermen who are for this. Okay. We need 35 to make it uh, veto-proof. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Perhaps you can go on Access Living's, uh, people can go on Access Living's um, 
website, and you can find out who the 23 Aldermen are. Access Living. Yeah, dot org. Accessliving.org. Okay. And um, also, so that's pretty much it. Now, and maybe at some point, maybe the WON might think about sponsoring some political education courses, you know, so people can learn about uh, government. Indeed. Uh, in the city, you know, state, county, and federal level. Important knowledge. I mean, I have, Important yeah, knowledge. you have so many uh, former politicians on your uh, <laughs> on your roster. Yes, you know. sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank you. you know, thank all you. Right, thank appreciate you it, man. All, all right, right. Have a good weekend. You too, right, Bye-bye. Juba, good evening. How are you? Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. This is Juba from hey. Central Pennsylvania. Hey, Juba. Hi, I was just, um, I had a little bit of justice or else withdrawal because I haven't called uh, in a couple of shows and uh, I had dreams about. Well, well we're glad uh, you're March. back, my sister. I had dreams about the March this week. Um, I came across um, the spring edition of the NAACP magazine, mm -hmm. and here are the titles or some of the titles of the award winners for the Image Awards No Good Deed, Blackish, Criminal Minds, How to Get Away with Murder. Um, let's see. Orange is the New Black, A Day Late and a Dollar Short, Gun Hill, Scandal, Yanra, Fix My Life, and the Bad Boys ESPN documentary. Mm. Now, I bring this up because the Justice or Else movement, the, the convention in October, is going to do what the media cannot do for us, and that's get our attention on something that is productive or not counterproductive. Mm -hmm. We have to have our attention on something other than what's being foisted on us since the, uh, 20 years ago when the minister told us to return to our communities and, and and be productive, support your newspaper, support positive imagery and things like that. we gotta, we got to all be on this. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to say. All right, Juba, thank you. Appreciate that. Encouragement. Let's go to Steve. Hey, Steve, how are you? Thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. Um, that's how I would often wonder just what it would feel like to be, uh, so we say, defendant in a courtroom with James uh, as the witness. You know, <laughs> exactly why is it that the defendant is guilty of your view? Can you point it out? No, I just feel it. Yeah. You know, this is why we should convict him because I feel it. <laughs> so I, I, I do applaud you for trying to, you know, get some sort of a, a sort of rational answer out of him as to why it is that, you know, you can define someone as being racist or not. Is yes. everyone racist? And, and he's so he's so be? um he, he's so uh definitive about about it, you know, and, and um I just don't I don't I don't hear that in you, Steve. I, you know, again, yeah, sometimes you just can't get through to some people. I mean, the notion, and uh, Matt McGill had this conversation with me some time ago in which he said to me, you know, I mean, the reality is, Steve, that, you know, and it's, of course it's something that I've known for a great many years and was told by African-American colleagues, that, you know, that there are, there are truths out there with regard to the issue of race that only a white person can say amongst white people and only a black person can say amongst black people. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that a truth is a truth, but... In the world in which we live, uh, you know, if you are white, there are certain things you just cannot bring up because within that framework because you just are not allowed to tread on in, in those waters. I think and, I think that's probably true, but does, I think uh, the format is also a part of that. Uh, oh, style, Stylistic, I mean, um, you know, nuances uh, help. Well, and I and I would tend to agree with that. Yeah. I, I, I I tend to critique my colleagues, and that I you know. Going back over 25 years, uh, I think many people, especially in the progressive wing of politics, you know, failed to realize just how important talk radio had become. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we knew that, especially uh, coming out of 1994, when, you know, conservative talk radio defined that election, Absolutely. that Republican sweep. And, you know, mm -hmm. so for my colleagues who sit in seminars and symposiums and exchange papers with one another and, and engage in this sort of discourse, I often say to them, you know, we need to get out there. Do talk radio, call in, you know, make yourself available That's because true. We, we have those messages, but nobody hears them. That's and now, uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, the context of, of what he was referring to in terms of, you know, black on black violence is something that uh, was within the framework of the discussion about the uh, Black Lives Matter movement in terms of their confronting various candidates, most recently Hillary Clinton and the discourse that took place between or she and the other individuals. Mm -hmm. And this is where um, one of your colleagues there at WVON actually raised the point that, you know, he thought that it was an important issue, but they did a bad job 
uh, in terms of, you know, framing the issue mm -hmm. with regard to discussing it with Hillary Clinton. And, and I tend to do agree with him in part that, you know, that they, you, you cannot simply say that, you know, that it's white violence is what is uh, to blame for the deaths of African Americans, when in fact it's much more complex than that. The vast majority of African Americans who die die at the hands of other African Americans, 93%. And what we need to do is frame it in terms of the socioeconomic and political issues that, you know, that uh, violence against, uh, committed by anyone against African Americans is the product of socioeconomic and political deprivation, disenfranchisement. And that if you could improve schools, if you could improve economic opportunity, if you could improve neighborhoods, that that is the discussion we need to have in order to talk about, you know, resolving these issues. Because, you know, even if you could do away with police brutality in its entirety tomorrow, you're left with 99 percent of the problem as far as black deaths in this country. Yes, sir. Thank and you, Steve. I, I, got, I got to go, man. I hear what you're you. saying. I appreciate you uh, explaining the context. Um, yeah. And, and um, you know, the. the the idea of Black Lives Matter is, is not just uh, Black Lives should matter to white people; it should matter to us. You know, that that's the point. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not a you know a, a slogan to throw at white people. It is black if Black Lives truly matter, that that means they matter. Hunter, good evening. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing. Uh, and how's uh, all the Brother guests? The Hunter, you know, all right, all man. the callers, yes, and sir. Brother Studious for mentioning me. Yes, sir. About the dragonflies. Yes, sir. I just want to quickly uh, let you know that uh, for the past three days they had this Green Church Chicago at Trinity, uh, a massive conference, and today it concluded. With the showing of the film Plant Pure. Oh, that was Nation. today. That was today. Okay, I was I was wondering if it was today or, or tomorrow. And uh, brother Salim, uh, I would venture to say at least fifteen hundred to two thousand people came. Wow, dig that! Fifteen hundred to two thousand people. The balcony was even full at Trinity. Man. You've been there, so yeah, you, you know how many people. Did, did, wasn't uh, there a jazz, was there a jazz program as well at Trinity? Uh, that was last night okay. with uh, Joan Colasso and Kurt Whalum. Mm. And by the way, I talked with Pastor Moss today, and Kurt Whalum is going to institute a program of teaching young uh, aspiring artists how to write socially conscious music. Woohoo! Go ahead. So uh, a lot of good things are happening. The film was absolutely outstanding, uh, re reporting on research that shows that are you a real vegan? Are you a vegan man? Are you a vegan? can not just curb disease, cure disease, but actually can lead to a healthier lifestyle. This was based on scientific studies. This wasn't uh, anecdotal information. Or are, are, you a, are you a vegan from, hunter? Uh, special websites, uh, but <laughs> it, the filmmaker was, was there, and he talked about how he tried to get a finding of fact passed in the Kentucky legislature, but of course, uh, legislators who have ties to lobbyists in the meat industry defeated that resolution. So instead, he's going on a campaign uh, to bring the information to uh, the country at large, starting with people who live in food deserts uh, and particularly in black communities. So I, I commend the guy for that. So uh, one one quick thing. Okay. I was disappointed. I heard parts of Minister Farrakhan's speech, mm -hmm. but I was disappointed when he said to boycott from Black Friday through the new year. But did not say whether that was going to include Kwanzaa or not. So I mm. wasn't clear if he was calling for a boycott of Kwanzaa in exchange of gifts in that mm. context. And so I would hope that someone from the NOI would make a clarification. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Hotep. Peace and blessings to everyone. Hotep. Brother Hunter, let's go to Randy. Hey, Randy, how you doing, brother? My brother Randy, you there? I hear I hear the phone. Brother Randy. I'll put him on hold. Let's go to uh Keith. Hey Keith. Hey Salim, how you doing? I'm well, man. 
How you doing? I'm uh, doing good. I definitely won't take up too much time. I've got to hear what uh, Brother Randy's got to say. <laughs> um, I just want to thank uh, you, your show, uh, and WBON especially, because uh, I may have not known about the minister's uh, speech uh, program if it wasn't for listening to VON. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you did you get anything out of it? It seemed like he was uh, almost talking or making uh, uh, kind of hinting or or uh, making a case for reparations a little bit. Uh, the minister? Yeah, I had to listen to his uh, speech again, but it seemed I seemed to get he, he's, making uh, a case for that. I don't know if you got well, that. He, he's um, he's spoken out uh, in favor of reparations several times. Uh, he, in fact, he was uh, he was he spoke at the reparations uh, um, conference that was held at Chicago State a few a few years ago, uh, two years ago, um, when uh, when when you know the the uh, Caribbean countries, CARICOM, made its demand to to the European countries, and there was an attempt to you know make a link. Then uh, Minister Farrakhan was one of the speakers then. It, but it seemed like in this speech in particular, it seemed like that was part I, of the I didn't hear the whole else. speech. I, I'm, I'm going to listen to it in, in total, and I'll be able to better oh, assess okay. it. And uh, well, I'd also like to thank you for uh, I attended um, uh, at the Center for Inner City uh, the talk by um, uh, Dr. Renoco. Oh, you okay. All right. Were you? Oh, it was, it was <laughs> outstanding. It was, I, it heard, was amazing. I it was heard. amazing. Yes, sir. He, he showed... Uh, I mean, he had all type of pictures and research that he was talking about, but in particular, he had a slideshow that was talking about all the African nations that uh, gained independence, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was just dead silence in the room, and uh, it, it, it's unexplainable the feeling I got because um, I, I read about these. Uh, nations that gained independence and introduction to African civilization. Mm -hmm. yes, but sir. to be able to put a picture to the beautiful places in Africa and the people in the different nations, it was, that that was just the highlight of uh, uh, his talk. But I mean, it was so much that I learned from that. Uh, very good, brother. I'm glad you, I'm glad you went, man. Renaco is a, a master teacher, my brother, and a master researcher, you know? Yeah, yes. Uh, it was, so I, I just want to thank you again for, uh, you know, advising or, you know, saying that's something that uh, we should look out for. So thanks yes, again. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate the call, man. Okay, take, take care. Take care, Keith. Randy, are you there? Randy! Man, Randy must be asleep. Let's go to uh, Kufi. Hey, Kufi, how are you, sir? Um, pretty good, brother. All right. Um, you know, a lot of, we, we stirred up a lot of conversation out here, haven't we? Oh, man, for real. You know what, brother? I made it a political science at Illinois State University, man. And I'm running for state senator because, you know what? This is a position that we need because Obama only served one year. He didn't connect Washington to, to Illinois. I went to Illinois State University. I have started a revolution out here, man. I'm the one that's been doing that. Mm. In, Blo in Bloomington, right? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no. I went to like, uh huh. Uh huh. Had a free ride, baseball on a radio show down there. I uh, did my internship at uh, Bloomington Normal. Did my census by hand before computers. I wrote everybody down in the Bloomington Normal. Illinois hand. Wesleyan is down there too, right? Yeah, Lloyd Wesleyan. Uh -huh. You know, we, 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 I'm, I'm running. I'm, if you could just listen for a minute, I want to pay kids to, to go to school for attendance. We need to pay them. How do we do that? The change that you spend at a grocery store that goes right there to pay the children. We'll find a way. The state makes money off of them. And booting cars. Stop killing a family. Stop arresting fathers for child support. I'm going to implement all those. We're gonna bring. I I I build up the north side with business. I have all my business on the north side. All right, my brother. I'm sorry. I got. I got. I got. Um, yeah, I'm this, man. Got to cut we you need off. To talk solution. We need to talk solution. You, and you, you, you got to call. Like. You got to call a little earlier. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. Let's go to Randy again. Randy. Okay, that's it for you, my brother. I tried, Doctor Witherspoon. How are you, my brother? Yeah, Bruce. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we still got to go out to these young people and get these young people inspired for learning. Yes, sir. Your mouth is young, so they, you can develop them quicker than the old people that are fed. Uh, no and doubt about it. Mm-hmm. So we need to go out to young people, educate them, show them to be proud of their history, and move forward and make a change. Tell them to go to school to be a doctor, a lawyer, a judge, or a school teacher. And we need more school teachers. We yeah. sure do, man. There's a great, great vacancy of school teachers, man. There's well, a need for men. school teachers in, in this men country. Too. We need, we need men yes, too. sir. We need men. And we need an elected board on the board. So we just need to fight that we get elected board. Mm-hmm. All right, my brother. Thank yes, you, sir. Brother. Appreciate it. Uh, Reverend Witherspoon, very um, urgent plea for what we need. And no doubt about it. And I was just reading that there is a, a, a gaping vacancy of of uh of uh school teachers we have a great need for school teachers in this country and and that's because i think because there's been a a kind of a um public attitude that has been anti-teacher that's out here a lot of folks are pro uh, charter school anti-teacher union and that's kind of bled over to a general demonization of teachers in general and i think the profession is getting a bad rap and therefore, it's not attracting the kind of uh, candidates that, that are necessary, especially as uh, Reverend Witherspoon said, men, especially black men. We need black men as teachers because the profession is, the profession is becoming overwhelmingly white. Uh, white women is feminized. Uh, and, 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 you know, they have the best intentions, perhaps, but they don't have that cultural.